Good afternoon, everybody, and a happy Monday to each and every one of you. Looking forward to the show today. We're going live a bit later than usual, but I still uh, hope to have a full four-hour broadcast today. That's the plan. All right, let's make sure I've got all the chats up so that I can see all your lovely faces. And by faces, I mean all your lovely names. All right, there we go. Now, I hope you guys had a wonderful weekend. And I hope you enjoyed all of the content that uh, I've been publishing all weekend. My shorts editor has been really hard at work, uh, just cranking out shorts. <clears throat> so uh, I've got so many shorts to, to offload that I'll probably be doing multiple shorts a day for, um, for this week to get us to, to kind of get through my backlog of really wonderful shorts. Uh, now, uh, I hope you enjoyed the lore video that I published this weekend. We told the story of Private Mahoney and Captain Myung on, um, oh, what was it called? Um, I forget the, the star system. Anyway, it was the Ground Pounders quest, which was a lot of fun to go through, and uh, it was great to revisit during the lore video. Uh, many people in the chat, however, said that there's a random encounter that you can stumble upon that sort of concludes the story. You get to stumble upon Captain Myung again. And so over the weekend, I quickly found that random encounter and created a lore video um, updating the story to Ground Pounders, and I published that as a correction to my lore video for the weekend. You can find it linked in the comments or linked directly from the video itself. But what I'd like to do today is, since I did that on um, my non-real save, the one that I do for shooting pickup footage, I want to go and track that down on camera. I believe it's on Procyon, um, the one of the moons of Procyon. And uh, then we'll we'll continue with where we left off from last week. Julian Z says, uh, "Good afternoon, Ox. So good to see you on this Starfield Monday. Hope you did. Hope you're well. Did you uh, get? Did you get? Get? Did you get the small update for the game installed? Uh, I noticed that there was an update for Starfield, but it automatically downloaded and installed um, offline. So." I, I don't know what was in it. Wolf Spear says, Ox, I've been watching you for about five years and I've always loved your content, even while I'm serving in the army overseas. Love your content. Well, thank you, Wolf Spear. I appreciate it. Um, thank you for your service overseas. And I hope you'll be able to watch me as long as you can, wherever you go. Darkness Knight says, I finally got to see Oxhorn live in a while. Hey there, Darkness Knight. Good to see ya. Always a pleasure to have people return. Alt Grindle says, love the shirt, Ox. Seriously, thank you. I've still been working with the company I bought this from to get my other shirts, because I, I bought four of them. And they sent the wrong one. So I'm waiting to hear back from them, and then I'll be able to show you the, the ones I actually wanted to, to wear during my Starfield broadcasts. And it's good to see everybody on Facebook today. Harold, J, Roman, Steve, Toby, Jessica, Emma... Uh, Stephen Anthony, so good to see all of you. Thank you all so much to, for coming. Um, <clears throat> so it's been a, a bit of a crazy weekend for me. Uh, give you a brief update. So, um, you all remember Admiral, Admiral, my my dog, uh, my poodle, my standard poodle. Um, he had a medical uh, problem, a medical emergency over the weekend, and he's currently recovering in a hospital. Uh, it was really weird and completely out of the blue. So, well, what happened is I woke up, uh, I woke up to 
hearing a very strange sound coming from Admiral. It was Sunday morning. Uh, he was making this really pained and worried sort of barking sound. And I came downstairs only to, to discover him like uh, sitting in a pool of foam. And uh, then I, I watched him uh, gag a lot. And then he just vomited up all this white sticky foam. It was really bizarre. So, of course, I, uh, I called the emergency. Um, there was like a 24-hour emergency veterinary hospital nearby. And, uh, and they, they couldn't take them. And then I called another, and they couldn't take them. A lot of them were full. None of them were open. Finally, I found one that would be able to take him, but they didn't open until Sunday morning. So I had to sadly sit in the house and listen to my poor dog make this really awful, just bizarre sound uh, while barfing up foam that I was constantly cleaning up all Sunday morning. Uh, then when the hospital... Um, opened, uh, they, uh, I got him over there, they admitted him, and turns out he had what was called like uh, a stomach contortion or something like that. And it's, it's common in the poodle breed, which is really weird. And it's not just the poodle breed, the doctor said that it's common in any deep-chested dog. If you've seen my, my dog Admiral, he's kind of lanky and his chest just goes down like that and then it comes up here to where his belly is. He's got this just deep chest. And what can happen is, at some point during the dog's life, um, the stomach can like push up against the chest and then sort of do a somersault and get twisted, which closes off the tubes in leading into and out of the stomach. It twists everything, closing it off. And there are varying degrees of this stomach twisting that can happen in deep chested dogs. And Admiral's was the worst that it could possibly be. It was a 360 degree twist. They did x-rays initially and they didn't see any twisting. And that's because the stomach looked like it was in its original position. But when they got in there for the surgery, it, had, it looked like it was in its original position because it had done a 360 degree twist. It was in its original position, but it had twisted all the way around to get there. So it was an extreme twist and they did the operation. Uh, they completed the surgery and he's currently recovering. So, uh, I am kind of on call a little bit. Um, that's the story. They, they initially expected him to be able to come home later tonight. They called me today and said they don't know when. Uh, they don't know if they're going to be able to do it tonight. So, we'll see. I pr I'll probably get a phone call later on. Anyway, just letting you guys know ahead of time that I'm a little bit on call. I could get a phone call at any time uh, with an update on the dog. And I might need to leave or... Or it might continue into, into the morning. That's all. But um, I got to say that I really appreciate the fact that I've got such a flexible work schedule <laughs> that can accommodate strange emergencies like this. And uh, yeah, so thanks to each and every one of you. Amber Rose says, Hey, Ox, finally caught up on Starfield playthrough. Thank you, Amber Rose. Well, we're ready to go. Uh, so when we left off last week, we had just arrived on Titan. The chat said that there were some really funny side quests to do on Titan, and then we kind of got you know caught up in everything going on on Titan. We were in the middle of a tour of the Titan facility when I completely ran out of time and I had to go. So we're going to log in. We're going to continue the tour. There is apparently a snow globe or a book that points to... Um, a location on Earth in one of the private corridors on Titan. I want to get that. I want to go get the the random encounter that concludes the Ground Pounder quest line. And then I think we'll try and, and focus on Aquila City. That's the plan, everybody. Amy Hudson says, Sending Admiral much love and hope he has a speedy recovery. Poor pup. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, he's the sweetest dog in the world and he definitely didn't deserve this. Um, I asked the, the doctors how this could have happened and how it could have been prevented. And he said with this breed of dog, it's not preventable. It's just something that sometimes happens with this breed. The only thing they can do is they can go inside the dog and staple the dog's stomach to the interior body wall of his chest cavity. And that can prevent the stomach from just spontaneously doing a somersault and twisting on up. But that would require knowledge of this particular issue in the dog and having that surgery as a puppy, which apparently, yeah, it was just a, a, a bizarre freak thing to happen. 
Halfway Nuts says 10 bucks towards your vet bill. Love the content. Keep it up. Thank you, Halfway Nuts. And yeah, it's quite a vet bill. I mean, I honestly, if it weren't for for having this job, I, I don't know how I would have been able to afford um, a surprise bill like that. So I'm extremely grateful to all of you. Mike Manigold says, or Mangold says, Hi, Ox. Sorry to hear about your dog. Thank you, Mike Mangold. I'll be sure to provide updates as things go on. I'm hoping for the best, and I think that he'll have a good recovery. And that guy over there says, Oxhorn, the number one best YouTuber program to watch, or YouTube program to watch, if you're entertained by grandpa-level gaming. Don't take that the wrong way. I love your videos. Really, I mean no offense. Listen, listen, just pro tip. That guy over there, listen. If you have to apologize twice after saying something within the very comment that you're using to say that thing, you might want to take a step back and think, hmm, maybe I shouldn't be saying this one thing. Maybe this one thing I'm saying, is it nice? Grandpa level gaming skills. I am playing this game on hard. I'll have you know and I defeated the Starborn and the the hunters on hard I'll have you know Okay, it's not like nightmare gaming difficulty, but it is it's not normal. It's on hard and this grandpa gaming skills guy is doing it on hard. Thank you There was only one game that I had to dump the difficulty down to to casual to complete and I forget what I think it was it was Diablo 4 Diablo 4 Diablo 4 was the only game where I just because of the class I chose or whatever I just couldn't beat it on hard and so I, or veteran it was veteran and so I had to go down to the casual gaming but on all the other games I've been playing I've been playing on on hard difficulty even the Resident Evil games right so grandpa level check yourself Gontaro Dim says, finish the free star story. You'll be glad you did. Thank you very much, Gontaro Dim. That has been on my agenda, but I just kept, I keep getting sidetracked by all these little things. Like, like Titan just came out of the blue yesterday. Yesterday, or last, my last broadcast was supposed to be the Aquila broadcast, but then I went to Titan for this quick, this quick, funny side quest, and then bam, the entire broadcast. Anyway, we're going to finish up on Titan. Don't worry, we're going to try to get to Aquila and, uh, and work on the free star quest line. Okay, where's my coffee? Robert says, finally caught up as well. Thanks for all this content. It feels like I've been listening to your voice 24-7 for several weeks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now to catch up on Dead Space 3 before Thursday. Well, Robert, that's extremely generous of you. Thank you so much. Uh, hopefully that's a good thing, listening to my voice 24-7 for several weeks. It's not one of those CIA torture things. No, it's it's a good thing. All right. Thank you for that one, Robert. I, I appreciate it. Okay, let's load my actual hard save on Titan. Okay, we can put that away because we're on a friendly planet right now. Our tour guide just walked on the other side of that door. Patrick uh, says, Oxhorn, what ship are you using? I'm using the Kepler R. It's the ship that we get. Well, it's one of the possible ships that we get by completing the quest with uh, uh, Stroud uh, Eklund. Just got a message. Looks like we got another leak in Sector Three. At the Stroud Eklund yeah. uh, car uh, spaceport. Second time this month. I know. I know. I'll send someone to go patch it up again. We do what we gotta do until we can get the approval to replace the whole unit. Well, at least I haven't been too bad. 
Okay, so we went into this facility, and uh, we are now going to the ice caves. Apparently, there's a system of ice caves beneath Titan that this uh, this. You get used to the methane processing smell after a while. That this methane processing facility has been built on top of. And let's see what that's like. Sean Fernando says, hey, Ox, I got some ideas for future games, Batman Arkham series, hopefully when you got some free space. Thanks. Uh, I don't know when I will. My schedule is pretty full. What with the new DLC for Cyberpunk 2077 dropping. Uh, there he is. Okay. And here he stops. Let's walk around and see what we can find. Rachel says, Admiral is lucky to have you as a dad. As a vet, I have a public service announcement. If you have a deep chested dog, you can request a gastropexy when they are spayed and neutered to prevent GDVs later. 42% of Danes will have a GDV in their lifetime. Yeah, the vet told me that Great Danes, yeah, you're right, are also one of those breeds that that are susceptible to this one i find myself suddenly very grateful for our accommodations in the lodge great danes greyhounds um standard poodles all susceptible to this issue but 42 percent i didn't realize that great danes had a 42 percent chance of having that particular issue anyway that's what my poor dog uh, admiral had and he's recovering right now just keep him in your, your thoughts and prayers because um he, he really is the sweetest little dog um, he didn't deserve this. He's a good boy. Alright, what are you guys? This is a methane cave. Should we really have a bunch of lasers and fire in a methane cave? Whoa! It's water. Hey, be careful not to point that thing at me. I didn't point it at you, Andrea. All right, so there's just water in here. Happy to answer any questions you have about what we're doing here. Claudio? Claudio Amsterdam. Another tourist come to learn about the ice mines, huh? It's dangerous in the ice mines. I'd much rather answer your questions than have you going off to explore on your own. Why don't you have robots or other machines do this work? For one, New Homestead is not a wealthy colony. But we also pride ourselves on doing things the old ways. It's part of the living history, they say. We don't mind. We work hard here, and it's very rewarding. Ice mines? Why do you need to mine ice? For drinking water. And we use some of it to produce this air you're breathing. We recycle a lot of what we use, but we still need a nice steady supply of fresh water. Lucky for us, Titan provides. What's so dangerous about the ice mine? I'm surprised I still get this question. It's slippery. It's sharp, it can break, it can cave in. Those are just the obvious examples. Titan is also full of methane, which can sometimes be trapped under the ice. As you know, methane can explode under the right conditions. It can also asphyxiate you if you breathe in too much of it. I swear, there must be like a connection missing within the development of Starfield because they got all of these great voice recordings and all of these great faces, but then when they match them up, they don't match. Like, this guy sounds like a grizzled old, you know, ranger at an outpost who's been smoking his entire life or something. And then we've got this recent college grad. 
for a face. Like, <laughs> it doesn't match. We could say mining ice doesn't seem as dangerous as you make it out to be, or as a fellow miner, I can respect the dangers you face. Ah, so you can relate. It's good to talk with someone who understands the challenges of the job. Not everyone does. If I might ask, what do you mine? A little of this, a little of that. None ya. As in, none o ya business. Really, that's a real option we can choose that was really conceived and written into this game. Okay. I don't really want to talk about my mining experience anymore. Actually, one time, I mined a mysterious artifact that gave me visions. Minerals, mostly, to be sold for industrial purposes. Well, let's see what happens if we, um... If we say this one. Oh. That's not what I expected at all when you said you did mining. But, uh, visions, you say, huh? Oh. That sounds more like what those people get up to in Neon, from what I understand. Anyway, I'm sure we could swap mining stories all day, <laughs> but, uh, I really should be getting back to what I was doing soon. All right, that's it. Why is he... Be careful out there. He's wearing a garbage bag, like the residents of the slums in Neon. Why are miners in here wearing garbage bags like slum residents in Neon? All right, let's continue with the tour. What else can I tell you about the ice mines? Ah, uh, Bill Starsap, what a name. We can say, I'm thirsty. Can I drink straight from the source? I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, first, it's an active work site. Second, it still needs to be filtered and checked for contaminants. But don't worry, we'll stop somewhere for refreshments before the tour is over. The tour? The tour? Uh, why not heat this area like the rest of the colony? Because I Good saw. question! I believe it has something to do with not wanting to contaminate the water with methane and other chemicals. The ice helps prevent impurities in the water. At least this is what I've been told. Is this where all of New Homestead's water comes from? Not all. Some water is created as a byproduct of methane processing, but that's usually saved in the emergency reserves. I don't need to know any more about the ice mines. I'm ready to go. Sounds good. Let's keep going then. We have just one more stop before we're done with the tour, and it just happens to be my favorite. This colony is home to the longest running establishment still in existence, the Brown Horse Tavern. The Brown Horse started as a simple mess hall for the scientists and workers when the underground was built, but it's been operated by the same family ever since. Now, what's a horse, you might say? <laughs> they were a large four-legged animal <laughs> on Earth, often used for transportation or manual labor. Long before space travel was even a dream for the folks of Earth, even before antique machines like automobiles were possible, uh -oh. horses could be found everywhere. What? You might have seen them in old movies or read about them somewhere. If not, I highly recommend looking into them sometime. They're beautiful animals. The tavern's original owner was infatuated with them, from what I understand, and named the place in their honor. The moniker, Brown Horse Tavern, is also a throwback to names of similar Earth restaurants hundreds of years before it was established. We take vandalism seriously here. You don't mess with history. Oh, so that's where that path went. Wow. And we do a complete loop. The Brown Horse Tavern. Here we are. Let's see if we can find anything Lots interesting. Lots of history here, if you're into that sort of thing. Off-worlders always ask how I can live here. I wonder how they can live anywhere it's else. It's a little weird that people come here to see what early colony life was like. To me, it's just how we live. Hi there. Well, I suppose this is one way to make a living, and if New Homestead deems it necessary. 
Oh, I'm so Those folks in Ceronia may be closer to other. Earth, but we do a better job preserving its traditions. Oh, it's one thing tourists. to learn about they early colony economy. life, it's another to experience it. Sure would be nice to get off world sometime. Hey, a slate. Love you, Anja. Hi, Anja. I found the slate one of the customers left behind. Tried contacting them, but they never came back for it. Anyway, I know they don't like us using newer tech like this here, but I figure I already catch enough flack for working at Chucks that I don't care. Or working at Chunks that I don't care. I just wanted to leave this here for you to tell you that I love you, baby. You're my everything. Anja, where have we heard that name before? I feel like we've heard that we name We used before. to get more tourists than we do these days. Warm food, cold drinks, what else could you want? Oh, right there. Anja Seattle. Hey, that's, she's from my town, Seattle. Welcome, I'm Anya. Is this your first time with us at the Brown Horse Tavern? Okay, it's Anya, right. I shouldn't have pronounced that J. Uh, we could say, uh, uh, yes, I've never been here before. Oh, well, thank you for joining us. You're in for a real treat. We've got an assortment of food and drinks, some of which follow homemade recipes that have been passed down over hundreds of years. So, what can I do for you? <clears throat> uh, I saw the Chunks restaurant out there. Does it hurt your business? <laughs> oh, hardly. The locals pretty much stay away from chunks, so whenever they don't feel like cooking themselves and want a fresh meal, they come to me. Only the tourists eat that junk, but, but don't tell that to my husband. Oh, oh. He manages the chunks. I love him, but he's a bit of a fanatic about it. We're gonna have to go and meet him. What is this place? You mean the Brown Horse? Well, it's only the longest continuous running restaurant since humans started settling outside of Earth. Right. There's a ah. lot of history within these walls. And some damn fine food and drink, if I say so myself. This place has been in my family for generations. My great-great, the, well, however many, great-grandmother opened it when the first colony started on Titan. Back then, it was a simple mess hall that she chose to put a little extra love and flavor into. And now, it's the pride of New Homestead. I'd like to see the menu after, you know, building it up like that. Let me show you what we have. Okay, what's all this good stuff? Okay, beer, beer. Um, beer in a sippy pouch. Love that. Erdbrow. <laughs> Erdbrow light. Erdbrow pilsners. <laughs> kiffles? What's a kiffle? I don't remember a kiffle. Ooh, a sweet dessert pastry of spiced and sugared walnuts rolled in dough and covered in powdered sugar. I mean, that looks really good, actually. Uh, pier pierogies? Pierogies, pierogies. Potato and cheese pierogies. Parboiled and fried. Oh, man, that looks good. I'd love some of that. And then a variety of more beers and sippy pouches. Ooh, a ta-amia pita. Ta-amia pita. Oh, man, that looks good, too. Man, they make the food look so good in this game. Sometimes, except the chunks. <laughs> Even the veggie grinder looks all right. I mean, I wouldn't want one because, you know, veggies. But it looks all right. And then just regular old toast. Okay, there we go. Take care. Thanks for stopping by. Now there's this door in the it's back. It's a little weird that people come here to see what early colony life was like. To me, it's just how we live. Ooh, and a computer. Brown Horse Tavern Computer. Established 2144, Titan. Inventory. Butter, cheese, bacon, pasta, milk, heavy cream, flour, meat, red meat, white seafood, tofu, carrots, potatoes, lettuce, tomatoes, Onion, celery, salt, bread, rolls. Luther's new chunks ideas. Shepherd's pie chunks. Cobb salad chunks. Taco chunks. Pizza chunks. Meatball sub chunks. Mac and cheese chunks. 
Bao chunks. Ja Jian Min chunks. Seasonal chunks? Candy cane chunks. Frozen eggnog chunks. Oh. Oh. Gingerbread chunks. Frozen eggnog chunks. Oh. Mm. Restaurant temperature control. Temperature control is locked. Uh oh. Is this going to be part of a side quest in the future? Don't tell me her husband is going to have me come over here and sabotage her restaurant. All right, so this is the cooler. The cooler in the pantry. Good brow. but I just wanted to see how they'd react. But aren't they going to think we're even more old-fashioned than they already believe? That's a good point. They already gawk at us like we're some sort of ancient curiosity. Oh, I'm just trying to have a little fun. Off-worlders always ask how I can live right. here. I wonder how they can live anywhere else. Okay, Bill Stryker. That delicious smell is making me hungry. <laughs> Can I answer anything about the brown horse? Chininator says, come on, Ox. Frozen eggnog sounds really delicious. Oh, no. It sounds really nauseous or nauseating. I mean, you've just got this big old frozen eggnog cube stuck in your mouth, and it slowly melts, and so you've got all this seasoned raw eggs sliding down the back of your throat. No, just... What can you tell me about the owner? Anya Seattle is the current owner of the brown horse. It's been in the Seattle family for generations. But Anya will be able to tell you more herself. Feel free to ask her. It doesn't feel right coming from me when she's standing right over there. And of course, someone descended from Seattle starts a bar. <laughs> We've got all these seasonal beverages up here. Any rec uh, menu recommendations? Ooh, that's a tough one. I honestly love everything Anya serves here. I'd be doing her a disservice to recommend one dish over another. You want the real answer? Order one of everything. <laughs> Chininator says, do you not like eggnog? I used to like eggnog. When I was young, I, I liked it. But then I learned how, how it was made, what was in it. And I, now I just can't, I can't drink eggnog anymore. Like, maybe every now and then I'll have a sip. You know what was the family uh, drink uh, for Christmas growing up? My family would mix eggnog with 7-Up. So that it became this sort of sudsy, eggy, nutmeggy thing. Yeah, it didn't mix well, right? So there was this layer of scum at the top of the the eggnog and 7-Up dish that you'd have to Need scoop away. Need some more time to think about it? To... I should stop talking. I'm just... This isn't... I'm not feeling well now. This... Why did they have to have eggnog chunks? Ugh! Chininator says, Come on, frozen eggnog sounds delicious. Gontra Dim says, no horses to punch in this game. They're all extinct. I'm sure you'll find another animal to punch. I have faith in you. Thank you. I'll just punch a terror morph. How could this possibly be the oldest restaurant in the settled systems? Easy. All the other ones fell to ruin when we abandoned Earth. There were technically older ones on Mars, but those have long since shuttered or been replaced. Oh. I think I'm good to go here. Okay, then. All right, we're headed to the last stop, right back where we began. Feel free to check out the museum exhibit in the main concourse here. These displays are full of rare earth trinkets salvaged from before humanity left, and Maurice is happy to talk about the collection. The Did museum's curator, Maurice, there? will be happy to talk to you if you want to know more. All right. That sound. 
Oh, that's right, the Star, <laughs> you star can't Sap believe tours. believe people actually live like this. Thank you, Bill Star Sap. Well, that's okay. that! I hope you enjoyed Star Sap tours as much as I enjoy giving them. First, you should know that this isn't like any of the other tour services. All right, we could say uh, it was very educational. It was all right. That was super boring. I feel like you should have been the one paying me. Or we could pay 500 credits and say, I loved it. Here's a little something extra for you. Sure, why not? Let's try it. Oh, wow. I, I really appreciate it. You know, I rely on tips from good people like you, so thank you from the bottom of my heart. Oh, Bill. Enjoy the rest of your stay in New Homestead. Perhaps in the future we could skip the extra steps and just set your cred stick on fire directly? <laughs> she hates Take it. Take care! <laughs> she hated it when I gave tuition money to that poor girl in the slums. She hated it when I gave him a $500 tip. She hates it when I give away money. Ugh. Richard says, Ox, that sounds just awful. Yeah, and you know what my family called it? Punch. Eggnog punch. Store. Ah. Did you know the museum here is full of old earth artifacts? Helmet Ooh, display. Uh. Well, hello there, and welcome to my little shop. Are you visiting New Homestead for the first time? <laughs> we could say yes, no, or maybe. Sometimes I party a little too hard and wind up in strange places. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. It happens to the best of us, I guess. I'm Jay. I'm happy to help you find what you're looking to buy or take a look at whatever you want to sell. Trades of all kinds are welcome here. Or if you have any questions for me about the shop, the merchandise, or even just New Homestead in general, I'm happy to help you. I wonder if that was a reference to Fallout 76. You know that one beer that we can get? What's it called? The... I forget. There's the special beer we can get that knocks us out. The Blackout Stout or something. And then we wind up in a random location. Okay, you sell any souvenirs or anything like that? We used to, but not anymore. Believe it or not, the new Homestead Tourism Board decided a while back to do away with souvenirs. We don't really have the resources or facilities to make them here ourselves, and it was decided that anything less than that would seem exploitive of our people and inauthentic. Only thing we have are these souvenir slates about the history of New Homestead. Tell you what, I've got an extra one here that another guest left behind a while back. You can have it. Hey! New Homestead, live history added. What do you think of all of the tourists who come to visit New Homestead? I love them. Uh, most of us in New Homestead appreciate what tourism does for our economic livelihood, so we go out of our way to make guests feel welcome. Some are indifferent about it, while a few others, I won't name names, are downright resentful of all the tourists and would prefer to be left alone. But that being said, I believe our generally friendly demeanor is a large part of what drives people to keep coming back. You mentioned something about trading. What sorts of things oh, are you looking oh, for? Sorry about that. Dude, I'm in the middle of talking. Glad you asked. I'm looking for all sorts of things. Anything, really. Uh, clothing, weapons, jewelry, even stuff they consider junk. <laughs> you name it. We don't get a lot of off-world stock, so I offer to buy things from travelers. Anything they're willing to part with. Between you and me, people around here talk a lot about tradition and whatnot, but even they get curious about what other worlds have to offer. Jason Fisher says, Ox, hearing you talk about holiday foods makes me think you're happy you can't taste much, lol. I am. I, I just like my staples for holidays. I like turkey and, and ham for Thanksgiving. You know, I like, um, I don't even know what I like for Christmas. The same thing. We have the same, my family has the same foods for all special occasions. And they make the weirdest things. My, my mom and my aunt and my grandma, they'll always make their signature dishes. And my grandma has this signature dish that everyone in the family calls the strawberry salad of old. Strawberry salad. A salad made from strawberries. What? Oh, and it's, it's made with jello? Take it's your time. Salad made with strawberries and jello. 
Yeah, I haven't tried it. I'm not going to. They keep trying to get me to taste the strawberry salad of old while they're drinking the eggnog and 7-Up mixture they call a punch. And I'm like, no! Just give me turkey and ham. That's all I want. All right, let me take a look at what you're selling. Sure thing. I'm also interested in buying if you have anything for sale. Okay. Uh oh How about... Lots of aid, butter, and lots of resources. Notes, Crimson Cabin, Jake and the Inu? New Homestead, A Live History, The Learned Astronomer. Okay, I've read that one. I believe they just gave me that one. Jake and the Inu? I've never heard of that. I gotta get it. Crimson Cabin? I've never heard of that. I gotta get it. Canteen coffee mug. Contains coffee, maybe. <laughs> Hypno art lamp. Ooh, oh, that's actually kind of cool. All right, I know where I'm going when I want to decorate my uh, player home. My friendly will be... All right. Enjoy the rest of your day. Okay, we got some new documents to read here. Crimson Cabin. <laughs> Wait a minute, I have read this. Freedom, savory, delicious freedom. Yeah, the hag smiled. Okay, we, uh, we read that one. Jake and the Inu part one. Yeah, I don't think I, I remember this. Jake and the Inu, A Tale of Enlightenment, Part 1. Since he was a boy, Jake's family had protected the Inu, the ancient creatures who brought life to his mountain. Oh yeah, I read Part 2, but I never got to read Part 1, right? Each day, Jake would enter the cave and clean the stone statues that connected the Inu to this world. <clears throat> he kept their location secret and shielded the Inu, Inu from the greedy men who lived in the Valley of the Mountain. Jake was always kind to his wife and son so that he could tell the Inu of his good deeds. The Inu rewarded Jake's devotion by bringing his family the life-giving stream. Each spring, it would flow from the mouth of the cave and bless his fields with a bountiful harvest. This blessing had only grown stronger each year. Jake's farmland was so prosperous that it covered the mountain and was seen by those in the valley. One day, two men visited Jake's farm. Let us buy your grains and your fruits, they said, for none will grow beyond the mountain. But Jake turned them away. The valley has run dry and surely you could make do with less. But the men's coins were of no use to Jake, for he received all that he needed from the Inu. One night, Jake woke to sounds coming from the Inu's cave. He raced to the entrance only to find the cave filled with men from the valley. Each one held an Inu statue and was carrying it down from the mountain. Jake cried for them to stop, but one man held him at the mouth of the cave. The lands of the valley are dying, he said. These spirits can bring us water, but you have kept them all to yourself. We will leave what you have already grown, but we are taking the Inu to the valley. End of part one. Cool little story. All right, new homestead live history. I believe this is new. Okay, yeah. Soul, the cradle of humanity. Soul, the sun. It's hard to imagine a time where all of humanity lived under one singular sun, but until the mid-22nd century and the invention of the gravity drive, that's all we had. Humans have existed for nearly 200,000 years, and all of them came from a planet called Earth, the third planet in the soul system. Without Earth, you wouldn't be here. The Titan Astro Base... The people of Earth's first uh, the people of Earth first sent an unmanned craft to Saturn's moon, Titan, in 2107. The Titan Astro Base was completed in 2130 to search for life beyond Earth. Though fruitless, it laid the groundwork for what would eventually become humanity's greatest endeavor, settling the universe. 
Scientists and engineers used Titan to perfect planetary colony building. A new home and old history. The new, uh, new homestead was officially established in 2185 as a living memorial to humanity's ingenuity and perseverance. Citizens of the settled systems were invited to visit and learn about our important history. This fascinating approach to education allowed visitors to see how the early colonists lived and worked. Sights to behold. See the majestic icy peaks of New Homestead's frozen land formations and frosty winds blow through the thick clouds overhead. Witness the powerhouse of the UC's most valued methane processing plants. Then warm up with a hot meal at humanity's longest running dining establishment after Earth, the Brown Horse Tavern. Okay, there's the gift shop. <clears throat> now, there's one, at least one thing that I, I want to do still. I was hoping you could tell me some more about uh, this exchange program. program. There's the chunks. Mission board, self-service, bounty clearance. Lots of history here, if you're into that sort of thing. It's been a while since I last visited. Nice to see this place still has the same charm. And I'm all the so tourists here, go to the chunks. Of course Everyone they do. should visit at least once in their life. The locals go to the Brown Horse Tavern. The tourists go to chunks. Don't tell my wife, but I actually prefer chunks to her cooking. And don't get me wrong, her cooking is great. Luther Atlanta. Hello there. Welcome to the new Homestead Chunks. We've got all your chunks favorites. Well, almost all of them. Sadly, we're out of the special sauce. I know, I know. But everything else is still that great chunks food you know and love. <laughs> so, what can I do for you? I want a yellow chunks jumpsuit like that. That looks awesome. So what's your favorite chunk? Oh, 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 oh. you had to go and ask the hard questions, huh? Uh, how can I pick just one? Chicken chunks, beef chunks, potato chunks, cheesesteak chunks, cheesecake chunks. I, you know what? Mm. I'm going to cheat if you don't mind and just say I love them all equally. <laughs> I love cheesecake. Your wife owns the Brown Horse Tavern. How could you work for the competition? Oh, it's all good. Chunks pays me pretty well. And between you and me... Anya's doing all right herself. Plus, we got this plan, you know? And we want to see if we can introduce some of Anya's famous cooking to the Chunks lineup and pitch it to corporate. Mm. Imagine, Anya's delicious food in every Chunks restaurant across the settled systems. And people are bound to come visit her place to see where it all started. It's a win all around. New Homestead uh, all about is all about authentic history. What's Chunks doing here? <laughs> well, people got to eat, you know. Uh, but seriously, I think we're just starting to get with the times a little. And I can't think of a better restaurant than Chunks to usher that in. I think corporate just saw New Homestead as an untapped market. And the locals may not eat it, but the tourists love having a taste of home. You really seem to love Chunks, huh? <laughs> you know I do. And what's not to love? It's delicious, nutritious, easy, fast, inexpensive. It, it sure makes my hungry belly sing <laughs> for joy. <laughs> Here. Nice. My wife thinks I eat too much chunks food, but I just can't help myself. It's so good. <laughs> this guy is happy with his life choices. Uh, okay, running out of chunk special sauce sounds like a problem. If I'm completely honest, it is. And people are always saying how this chunks can't compare to the real deal. And I just know it's because we never had that mouth-watering sauce. I've been in contact with some of the other restaurants out there, and they'll give me some. But they say they can't afford to send it, and I don't have a ship, so what am I to do? Oh, Quest, okay. Is there a reason Chunks doesn't just send you the sauce? For real? Good question. Now, they haven't said, but I think it has something to do with them prioritizing other Chunks over mine. Guess it's made at a different facility than our other food. And they don't even want to pay the shipping cost to ship from another store to ours. 
And sometimes I get lucky and a cargo hauler passes through with a route that takes them near other chunks and back again, but there's no guarantee. Is the sauce really that important? You bet it is. You may not hear people talk about it, but trust me, it's the secret ingredient. It's like the glue that holds it all together. Uh, I mean, not literally. I'm not saying it's glue or, or that uh, our food falls apart. It's delightful. Tangy, savory, it's a little sweet, but not too sweet. And I've noticed that once people find out we don't have it, sometimes they don't return. It's the reason business isn't as good as other chunks. Hmm. Well, that's too bad. Anyway, I need to go. Or we could say, if you just need someone to go get it, I could do that for you. Wait, for real? You do that. You're not pulling my leg. You're right, this is ridiculous. I'm not doing work for chunks. I'll do it if you pay me. <clears throat> or, yeah, no problem, just tell me where to go. Oh, yeah, right. I actually just got a message back from another chunks before you got here, and they got a case ready to go for me. Hey. Just tell them you're there to pick it up for me, and it should be good to go. Thanks. All right. Cool. Gotta go get some chunk sauce. Special sauce. Uh, in neon. Oh, we're going to neon. All right. Welcome to chunks. Please choose your chunks. <laughs> Thanks for choosing chunks. Which chunks would you like today? <laughs> what exactly are chunks made of? Hey, <laughs> welcome back. Honestly, Can I get you something else? you're probably better off no, not thanks. thinking about I it. I just had a question about the uh, food. Sure thing. Do people on other worlds really eat this stuff? I mean, I'm no stranger to processed protein, but this is, well, it's like eating the packaging the protein comes in. I don't see what the appeal is. Chunks in for everyone, I guess. But I'll tell you, this is the most popular food in the settled system. They must be doing something right. Maybe it's just me then. Oh well, more for everyone else. That guy over there says, let me try again, Oxhorn, the number one YouTube program to watch if you're entertained by legendary level gaming. Oh, that's better. Thank you, that guy over there, Grandpa Level Gaming. Don't know where your head was at. Welcome Legendary to level. Ooh, Home of the I best chunks in the settled eat. system. That's what it is. Okay, uh, what exactly are chunks made of? Ugh. All I am legally allowed to say is that our chunks meet all known minimum standards for nutrition. I'd like to buy some chunks. Great. What can I get for you? <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> chunks, apple, packaged, chunks, beef. I don't want to see packaged. I want unpackaged. Chunks, cola? A cube of cola? And seaweed snacks. Well, these aren't chunks. These are triangles. A cola flavored chunks food cube. Packaged for freshness. Chunks chick? Chicken. Ch ugh. The pictures make this it look so much better. This is smaller than I thought it would be. Okay, well, we've got to go to Neon. They have a chunks here. Oh, it's so cold here. I guess I should have expected that. But there's one thing that I'm missing. In my last broadcast, somebody said that this guy, Maurice, has a book that can give me another location on Earth to explore, but I need to find his home. Now, we learned from the tour that uh, some of the residents have premium homes. So we need to find his home in like the premium suites. And I don't know where to look. So, uh... Ooh, cred stick. I don't want to steal that. There's the clinic. We finished that quest. So it sounds like we can do it all over again. All right, so here we've got some I could speeds. really go for some of Anya's cooking over at the Brown Horse. 
But while I was here, I didn't find any books that we hadn't already read. Because we already looked through these suites. War of the Worlds, we read that. Down an elevator, says chat. This is to the surface. Noel Heron says, <clears throat> Ox, use the key to use usable items. I don't know what you mean. Use the key to use usable items. <clears throat> Hitomi says, uh, did Ox pick up Maurice's journal in the museum? Oh, it's in the museum. Well, I mean, I did go to the museum, but I didn't find Maurice's journal. I've been looking for Maurice's journal. This exchange program. There are times I envy those who are able to travel like you. There it is, Maurice's journal. Scanning Earth was astonishing. There's just nothing. The whole planet is covered with sand and will never support life again. I did scan after scan of the major population centers and returned nothing. I did get a glimmer on the ancient site of Hong Kong. It was faint. I wasn't sure I just imagined it, but I landed there. And there, amidst the unrecognizable sands, was something. What was this edifice, this monument of a now dead civilization? It was humbling and deeply depressing. There it is! All right! Oh, wow. Sounds uh, immersive. Visit Hong Pretty Kong. Fun. Thank you, everybody. Oh, that's where that goes. Oh, wow. Well, we have explored all of New Homestead. Now, one thing to note, I heard that if you talk to the ship customizer Got guy, anything you need to offload? We're asking everyone to take care of any leeches on their ships. Okay, no problem. Oh, man, I'm sorry I missed that. Uh, I skipped that because I think he was about to say something that um, had to do with the heat leeches and our connection to the primary plot that we did earlier. Um, anyway, <clears throat> I remember reading that the shipbuilder on Titan has hull pieces that you can't find anywhere else. Uh, from what I've read, uh, many of these places will have um, hull pieces that are unique from place to place. But as I haven't used the shipbuilder all that much, I don't really know. I don't really know what's unique from cellar to cellar. Okay, let's go check out Hong Kong. Oh crap, I, I, I didn't go to the cockpit. Whew. Always a satisfying moment to return to your ship. This ship is so big that it's gonna be faster to just go back outside <laughs> and shoot the cockpit. Builder, 
The shipbuilder in New Homestead is for Nova Galactic pieces. I see. Hell of a view from here. So we get Nova Galactic pieces from New Homestead. Okay. Well, we are in the solar system. Let's go to Earth and find Hong Kong. We've got New York. We've got London. Now we've got... Why is it always dark? It's always night when we land at these locations. All right, five hours should do it, right? Come on. Whoops. There are worlds to conquer. I was beginning to wonder if you hibernate. Okay. Important or not, I'm ready to listen. What? Sarah, there's a chair right there. There's there's a chair right there. Do you really have to Hey. Really? Sarah, just whatever, whatever makes you happy. Come. <clears throat> oh, the new key for usable items? Was that in the update? Can we now eat items? Eat food while exploring instead of putting it in our inventory first? Okay. Well, you know what? I've never been to Hong Kong. So, I don't know what landmark this is that we've discovered. Hong Kong Snow Globe. low temperatures here. Keep an eye on your vitals. One structure remaining in Hong Kong. And very little on the horizon. Kingsley says, I haven't seen Oxhorn since Wrath of the Lich King. Wow, that is a long time ago. But it's good to have you back. You can fast travel, says Erica. I know, but if I fast travel, I miss out on random encounters. The last time I ran to the ship, we got a random encounter of the Starborn landing, which was fun. Plus, 
The ship is positioned on a hill far away from the landmark, and my thinking is that if I can get to the ship, I can get a better shot of whatever landmark that is. Aha! Random encounter! Starborn! Just like I thought. Plus it gives me a chance to try out my new uh, laser rifle, and man, I'm liking it. Wow, look at this, I love this rifle. Holy cow! I just killed four Starborn on a hill with just the rifle. Wasted two grenades because they were way too far away. But man, that was great. I love this thing. And I've got 39,000. No, I've got 3,900 ammo left. And this is going to give us the best view possible of the new landmark. Oh yeah. That is gorgeous. Really? Okay. That's as far out as I can push it. Yeah, I can't. <clears throat> okay, well, there we go. We got a great shot of whatever building that is in Hong Kong. Oh, 
Okay, now that I've gotten the photograph and the starborn, I can fast travel to the ship. Actually, let's, uh... Let's go to Neon and get that chunks recipe. Or not not the chunks recipe, the, um... Uh, the, um... Special sauce. The special sauce. Alright, Neon is gonna be... Yeah, Foley 2. Free Star Collective Space? Yeah. That's quite a ways to get some special sauce. I do admire what Bayu has built for himself here. And let Ryujin Industries help you get there. Um, instant sensor overload. Now, I did a bunch of Neon quests in a previous live stream, but I believe there's still plenty to do here. And don't worry, I will do it all. But um, right now, I want to do some free, free Star Collector quests. Chunks. 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 Come in today and choose your Chunks. You've the Chunks family is happy to see you and to serve you. What can I get you? I want a Chunks outfit. That's what I want. What exactly are Chunks made of? <sighs> Honestly, you're probably better off not thinking about it. None of the people who work at a Chunks wants to work at a Chunks. I'm here to pick up some special sauce for the Chunks in New Homestead. Huh. I thought that was a joke at first, but yet yeah, here you are. Let me get that for you. Hey, and let me know if I can get you some Chunks for the road. Chunks special sauce added. I gotta see what this looks like. Show me this Chunks special sauce. Oh, yeah. There it is. Special sauce. <laughs> oh, welcome to the wide universe of Chunks, the settled system's only fast food chain. We specialize in enhanced synthetic flavor with over 50 tasty varieties, including favorites like chicken, chocolate, potatoes, apple, and homemade pumpkin pie. Better than the real thing. That's the Chunks guarantee. Mmm. Chunks. <laughs> Okay. Back to Seoul. Back to Titan. Back to New Homestead. Zeon Productions says you can't enter the Starborn ship. Sadly, you can't. We tried in, in a previous live stream when a starship, a Starborn ship landed, and when you go to the door, I should have shown you earlier, but when you go to the door and you open it, all you see in there is the vacuum of space, and you can't enter. It's really weird, but cool. Welcome to New Homestead. Don't touch. I'm here to save the chunks. Chunky, chunky, chunks. All right. Oh. It's been a while since I last visited. Nice to see this place still has the same charm. Hey, good to see you again. About that sauce. Hey, you're back. I, um... Uh, people are getting antsy for special sauce. <laughs> you got it? He, he wants the sauce all to himself. All right, I got the Chunks special sauce for you. All right, lay it on me. Let's take a look. Mm-hmm, that's the stuff, all right. Enough for the customers with a little leftover for yours truly. Mm, thanks. 
You're welcome. We got 24,000. Hey, we got Chunks Cake. Chunks Cake. Did you see those wind turbines out there? Wow. What does a Chunks Cake look like? Ooh, that is a, it's a chunk of cake is what it is. That is a Chunks Cake. Oh, and it's stamped. Of course, it's stamped on the bottom. Hmm. Random Fandom says, put some chunk sauce on chunk sisty pit. Oh, man. You gotta ruin chunks for me. I mean, they may be gross, but at least they look good. <laughs> the sisty pigs, they do not sound good. They do not look good. The chunks at least look good. Okay. I think I'm done with Titan for now and New Homestead. Um, I really wanted to do the first free star quest, Deputized. Talk to Emma Wilcox. I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this is going to start off the free star quest line that um, we got a taste of when we first visited Aquila City. Irvin Chadwick says, hello, Oxhorn. T-shirt idea. You should make a Chunks t-shirt. <laughs> That's a great idea. I love it. Erica Petit, or Petet says, building in uh, Hong Kong is... International Commerce Center. Oh, the building that we saw in Hong Kong is the International Commerce Center. Oh, thank you for that one, Erica. That's great. I do eventually want to do a lore video on Earth, but before I can do that video, I need to find all of the locations on Earth. I think there are only five. Correct me if I'm wrong. And if that's the case, we've got three of the five. I need to track down the final two. And then chat was telling me that we actually uncover some Earth lore by uh, completing the constellation quest which means before I can do that video I got to complete the constellation quest line and then that's gonna put uh, bump me up against the new game plus window which I don't know if I want to do so I got some thinking to do there uh, Signata says sisty pig or pink paste do I have to choose between the two why is it that Bethesda and obsidian have always these awful food items in Fallout 4 we had the pink paste no no and, and, and no system. I'm going to go for chunks. Chunks every time. All right. Let's go to Aquila City. That's going to be in Cheyenne. There we go. Fiddler the Helper says, I think it's closer to 10 POIs on Earth. Oh, really? There's 10 of them? Hitomi says, I think it was like 10. <coughs> is it really? My God. This city is so large, yet retains a sort of rustic feel. I find it comforting. Well, then I've got a lot of work cut out for me if I'm going to find all 10. All right, hopefully this is going to start off the Ranger's quest line. Hitomi says in Aquila a lot, City. Right? In space? They just do us all a favor and never turn into one of those spacers. In Aquila City, there is a bookstore. It sells a book about Egypt for one of Earth's points of, point of interest. Oh, really? Oh, a bookstore. Yeah. It's going to be right around here, wouldn't it? All right, let me know if you see the bookstore. Ro Roland's Arms. Chunks. Of course, there's a Chunks here. I really like Aquila City. It's a cool place. What's that? This is uh, Terra, uh, Terra Brew. Midtown Minerals. All right, I'll go look for the bookstore later. Right now, let's focus. Wait, it's Freddy says the bookstore is in the back towards the left. Okay. Already scalped ticket prices for the concert are three times face value. The rock is surprisingly well fortified. The early settlers here were quite practical. Remember, get their music wherever slates are sold. In the back to the left, uh, there's a heritage museum. 
The Co-Heritage Museum, which would be interesting to explore. And we got a for sale. Sinclair's Books! Bookstore! Sinclair's Books. Could I get the digital copy of the things I buy here? No. What? Why not? I sell books. Physical books. Space is a premium on my ship. If I could download it to my slate, I could have a whole library. There are places you can go for that, ma'am. Just not my shop. <laughs> good day. <laughs> Wait, can't we... I said good day. We're done here. She is a physical book snob. I love it. <laughs> Nicholas Nickleby, the Comet, the Paradiso Complex. We have actually... If you have so many books to read and so little time... <clears throat> we have uh, uh, read all three of those. Are there any books you're looking for? I am a bit of an aficionado of old Earth novels. Well, truth be told, it's more of an obsession. <laughs> Reading their stories is a revelation, not only for, you know, the pure imagination, but the window you get into long gone historical eras. I'll pay handsomely for any books you find like that. Except Charles Dickens. Definitely not Charles Dickens. <laughs> What's wrong with Charles Dickens? Oh, oh, nothing wrong at all. When colonists were forced to leave Earth for good, cargo space was precious. And for some reason, everyone thought to bring their Charles Dickens collection. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I mean, he was an amazing writer. His stories are timeless. But what I'd give for a copy of Sense and Sensibility or the Three Musketeers, oh. The original Three Musketeers, mind you, not the dozens of interpretations of it. Wow, she, she really is a snob. I, I love this. I love her. This is great. And this is a lore explanation as to why we find Charles Dickens absolutely everywhere. Of course, the real explanation is that it's in the public domain, so they, they, you know, the developers can get away with publishing Charles Dickens in their game. But the lore explanation is that everyone wanted to bring Charles Dickens with them when they left Earth. <clears throat> um... We could say you can read anything you want on digital. Oh, but she's going to breathe fire at us if we do that. <laughs> or we could say I feel the same. Uh, the same way about a good book. I got to hear what she'll... Now, we might we, we might get locked out of a chest, a quest, if we do that. So let's say I feel the same way about a good book. Who doesn't? Perusing the shelves? So many options. Brad Ludwig says, I've seen 10 old Earth locations available, one on Mars, one on the moon. Uh, okay, I found the one on the moon. There's one on Mars, really? You really love books, don't you? Movies, slates, theater, all have their appeal. But books, you can get a window to mankind in its earliest days, whether adventure with Homer, or the actual thoughts of Julius Caesar penned in his own hands. And they offer visions of the future and wonderfully impossible things and might have been. So, yeah, I do like books. Do you run this store by yourself? Yes. I had a husband, but he's no longer with us. We loved to travel and always we'd be looking for rare books. Most of what you see here are mementos. It's sometimes hard to sell, but books are not meant to be hoarded. They're meant to be shared and spark something in us. If I have any books for your old Earth collection, I'll sell them to you. Oh, I'm afraid there's nothing you have that I don't already have. Sorry. Okay. Well, I'd like to see what you have for sale. For purchase? Yes. That guy over there says, I recently watched your Lonesome Road videos. The Lonesome Road song you made is my ringtone. Have you ever considered becoming the kind of rock star that smashes his guitar on the ground? <laughs> well, I mean, as, um, as someone who refuses to ever spend money in a video game, I th think you can see how that translates to my real life. If I had a beautiful electric guitar that I was using on stage, the last thing I would ever do is smash it because then I'd have to buy a new electric guitar. What? I don't, I've never understood the whole smashing guitars on stage thing. It's just such a waste. Like, why would you do that? So no, I would not smash a guitar on the ground. Would I ever become a rock star? I mean, yeah, who doesn't dream about becoming a rock star someday? 
I just, you know, I need the, the producers and the people to discover me. That's what it is. I've been on this plan for 42 years and I have yet to be discovered. Once I'm discovered, you know it. I'm going to be rocking, rocking with the sages because that's what sages do. They rock. All right, Tale of Two Cities, Bad People, Bad Jokes, Blake House, Carry of the Cosmos, Charity in a Godless Universe, Part 1, 2, and 3. I don't know if we've read all three of these. Four, Part 4. God. Crimson. Did we? All right, I got to get these. Because I don't know which ones I haven't read. The Chunks Employee Handbook? I don't think we've read that. Have we read that? I'm gonna get it. Phil Everglass, Hard Times, My Life, Chunk by Chunk. We have read that. Nicholas Nickleby, Oliver Twist, Red Rover, Come Over, Shadows in the Attic? I don't know if we did, we did that one. Shadows in the Attic. The Ancient Civilization of Egypt. That's new. 590. The Gravity Paradigm, The Orchid Merchant, and The Pickwick Papers. All right, we've read all of those. I think, I think we got, I think we only, I think we got the new ones. Activities, visit the Cairo landmark on Earth. Yes. But first we got some reading to do. All right, everybody settle back. Get a glass of scotch, or actually it's not scotch time. It's more like uh, coffee time. Get a glass of coffee. We're going to do some reading. Charity in a Godless Universe, part one. By Amelia Sang. Part one. Atheism was just the first step for me. I was raised in a world of right and wrong. I walked among chosen people. Each night, my family would gather and pray for the sinners in our lives to find salvation. I can't tell you exactly when I stopped believing in these things. Like many who lose their faith, for me, the cracks formed slowly over time. An illogical verse here, an unanswered question there. One day you realize you're working hard to hold on to something false. You don't want to lose your community or your connection to your family, but sometimes maybe things that don't make sense are just wrong. The details of my awakening aren't important, but what came next is. I never expected that losing my faith would begin a profound new chapter in my life, a time of deep compassion and charity as a member of the enlightened. So this is gonna tell us about the enlightened in this uh, universe. I believe, uh, a couple of members of, of Constellation are enlightened as well, including uh, Walter Stroud. Part 2. My settlement was founded as a commune by the members of my family's church, a place where the congregation could worship in peace without interference. But word travels fast and our small colony began to grow. I think this is the one we read previously. Our success attracted those in need of help and those with nowhere else to turn. When I was 10 years old, I watched two officers lead a frail looking man down our street. He had been stealing from our settlement's emergency rations. Our local security had been trying to catch the thief for weeks. I asked my parents if the man was hungry. If he didn't have enough to eat, couldn't we feed him the same food he had been stealing? My parents explained that while our settlement probably could afford to feed the man, stealing is a sin, and the thief must ask God for forgiveness. That night, my family gathered to pray for the soul of the man. They asked God to help him see beyond a life of sin. That man's name was Edgar, and he didn't need our prayers. Edgar needed food and work. Since no one gave him either, Edgar would be in and out of our settlement's prison for several years to come. <clears throat> Where's part three? Did I not? Part three must have been the one that was not new because it's not coming up in my new reads. So moving on to part four. Of the five generators that once powered our settlement, my family's church had left behind just one. But with no one left with the knowledge to repair it, blackouts were frequent. Nine months after the church members left, conditions in our settlement were dire. Most of the call, oh, that's right, because in, in part three, they decided to leave and she left behind. She stayed behind because she had lost her faith. Most of the colony's credits had left with the congregation and merchants were no longer, we, and merchants no longer had a reason to visit. We began rationing our remaining food, but supplies were running low. Anyone with a means to escape had long since left the planet. We faced a total collapse, if not, not for what happened next. The first ship arrived at night and woke up the whole settlement. 
No one had visited in months. In the dark, dozens of us made our way to the starport and found new craft landed and found a new craft landed there, large but older. On its side was painted a golden symbol. Six hands joined around a planet. Hello, yelled a man from the boarding ramp. I'm Dr. Dewan. My friends and I are from the Enlightened. We heard there may be a settlement out here in trouble. I pushed to the front of the crowd. Our generator has failed. We have about a week of recycled water left. Do you have anyone who can fix it? Okay, he said. We can hook up your recycler and put power from our ship. Then we can see about those repairs. Hey, someone yelled from the crowd. Are you people from some kind of church? The man stopped and laughed. No, he shouted back. We're actually kind of the opposite. Over the next few days, more enlightened ships arrived. Their crews fed us and restored our settlement's power. But then they didn't leave. Though Dr. Du or through Dr. Dewin, we learned more about the Enlightened. They called themselves Atheist Humanists. He told us they go to places in the galaxy where people need help. Without gods, he said, all we have is each other. The Enlightened took up residence on the grounds of the old church and began teaching us survival skills, how to cook, and how to repair our colony's equipment. They lent us credits to buy supplies, and within half a year, our settlement was functioning independently. Eventually, eventually, the Enlightened packed up and left our colony to survive on its own, but this time I left too, as the newest member of their group. I had finally found a cause that made sense to me, an ethos I could believe in without ignoring part of myself. There are no gods to worship, no divine beings are coming to save us. Humanity's capacity for empathy and our willingness to support each other is our species' best hope to survive among the stars. It's up to mankind to watch over itself. Michael Seacrest says the one on Mars is on the mountain behind the outpost, the face of Mars snow globe. Oh, great. Next time I'm at Sidonia, remind me to get that one. Thank you. Chunks employee handbook. All right. Soon after founding his breakout business, Chunks, founder Fred Blombart personally wrote the three-page employee handbook. The following is an excerpt from page two. It's like that saying, the customer is always right. Here at Chunks, we... if Oh, we did read this one. The customer is always wrong. Okay, we read this one already. Shadows in the Attic. In 2297, then unknown author Paul Lamont published the horror novel Shadows in the Attic. It quickly, uh, quickly went on to become one of the highest grossing books in the settled systems. Martin, standing on the front lawn, peered up at the small attic window. What do you see, Marty? Do you see the little girl? The ghost everyone is so afraid of? Eva asked, almost laughing at the absurdity of the local legend. No, not a ghost, Martin responded. Only shadows. Ooh, so edgy. And finally, the ancient civilization of Egypt. When the ancient world was young, the civilization of Egypt was already old. The pyramids of Giza still tower over Cairo, and, uh, and awed Roman legionaries and Napoleon soldiers as much as any modern visitor. But it was more than a tourist destination. The Fertile Nile was a key breadbasket and valuable source of revenue for thousands of years. Its influence on the Mediterranean was and is profound. You know, when I was in college, I was taught that um, the reason the Great Sphinx no longer has a nose is because when Napoleon and his soldiers went there, they used the Sphinx as target practice for their cannons and blew the nose off. However, I actually learned later after I graduated that that's an urban legend. That that's not exactly how the Sphinx lost its nose, mainly because they didn't find the nose, because if they had knocked the nose off, you would find pieces of it lying about. They didn't find any pieces of it, but because the damage is consistent with the fragility of the nose when it was uh, created and with wind and weather erosion. So it's more likely that it just faded away over time. Using the latest technology, we have new insights and glimpses into the rise of ancient Egypt and how its society changed over the years. So come with us on a trip through the land of pharaohs and pyramids. So starts a definitive work on the history of Egypt by a collection of unknown archaeologists and anthropologists published in 2133. Yay, we get to go find a pyramid. Oh, I hope the pyramids are still in Egypt. All right, we got some books. Thanks, everybody.
A Hong Sinclair, book idea. Write what you know. What about a bookseller that, that solves a variety of crimes with her knowledge of ancient works? Think like Sherlock Holmes, except for anything literary. Maybe any news? Perhaps with a rival turned partner in Aquila City security? Just need to think endings. If you nail the mystery ending, then everything's in great shape. Rosebud from Citizen Kane. Who is where in Paradise Lost? So much Dickens out there. Maybe tie in with one of those books? She's a budding author as well, because of course she is. Gunslinger's Guide 2. Permanently reload and draw Loretta weapons an additional 5% faster. All right. Hey, hey that's, there's the bookshop. Cool. Right, let's uh, continue with the quest. <laughs> I know Great if I go... Great customer service. Just super. If I go straight to Earth to find the pyramids, chat's going to get frustrated because I've been trying to start this ranger quest for, for, for days but now. I don't know if I can have... So let's go here and start the quest. The rock. And you're breathing? Back to normal yet? Mostly. Still feels a little weird, though. Guess I'm not used to having the tube out. But it's nothing that would keep me from getting back out there. You need to give it more time, Helga. Guess that means you won't be telling the Marshal that I'm approved for field duty. Not yet. There could still be a setback, and I'd need to be close at hand if that happens. Fine, fine. But you should know that I'm crawling the walls in here. You just take it easy. Shouldn't be long now. Right, let's see if we can find the context of that conversation. Well, hey there. Hiya. Um, I heard you talking with the doctor. What happened? Got into a tussle with a Shaw Gang smuggling ship in Kodo's orbit. Had a limp back to Aquila City, with my ride mostly in one piece. It was a bit of a hard landing, you might say. Got a few broken ribs and a concussion. Turns out one of those ribs punctured a lung. Had a breathing tube in for a spell, but that's gone now. Seems I'm healing up pretty good. We could pass a medicine check to say use of a thoracostomy tube is a pretty standard treatment for traumatic pneumothorax. <clears throat> uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> Everyone knows a thorologic tube is the right approach for uh, that problem. So what do you do around here? Right now, not much of anything. Doc says I need a rest. Meanwhile, I've been trying to make myself useful, reading dispatches and reports and such. That way, when I'm cleared for field duty, I'll know the lay of the land. Oh, where'd your doctor go? He's gone. Infirmary. Just waiting around. You're probably looking for Mary. Right, Mary. I can patch you up. Or if you need supplies, I've got those as well. Some days it feels like if I stopped stitching people back together, the whole city would be a ghost town in a week. How's being a doctor in Aquila? Overall, not too bad. People keep me hopping all the time. Mainly it's minor scruffs, bruises, the occasional broken arm. The real work is when someone gets attacked by an Ashta. Those are the bad times. I could use some medical supplies. Here's what I've got on hand. All right, antibiotics, boosted injector, heal paste, all the standard stuff. Brad Ludwig became a bronze ox. Thank you so much, Brad. I got a feeling this ain't the last I'll see of you. Should have brought something to read. The doctor can provide any supplies you might need. Okay, in a pharmaceutical lab down here. And junk. <clears throat> right, that's the doctor in the rock. That must be an Ashta. 
Sorry, but I've got work. I feel for the folk in the stretch. I try and give a credit or two to the low house when I'm able. That's pretty crazy, even by Shawgang standards. Well, nobody ever accused those boys of having an overabundance of common sense. Ain't that the truth? Ms. Cordelia Chesterfield says, for your information, you may get special dialogue if Sam joins you on these ranger missions. Oh, right, Sam. I should probably be doing these Aquila quests with him, shouldn't I? Jam and Cohen says, <clears throat> the contraband you left in Aquila City is in a container in the Trade Authority physical location. Okay, thank you, Jam and Cohen. Need something? You got some business with me? Uh, we could say, uh... The Marshal sent me. Oh, well, if the Marshal sent you to me, that means he's looking to recruit you. Just so you know what you're getting into, I'll explain who we are and what we do. Well, the Freestar Rangers ensure the safety and security of the Freestar Collective and its people. We might hunt down a fugitive, break up a smuggling operation, investigate a starship theft, or put some would-be bank robbers behind bars. Whatever needs doing to keep the people safe, we do. Wade Speakerman with a very generous super tip, uh, uh, <clears throat> a super chat says, the head of the Sphinx is a recarved head. Dr. Robert uh, Schoch believes the original head was a lioness called Mehmet. And the erosion on the Sphinx is over 9,000 years of water erosion. And the structure was built over 11,800 years ago not 4,500. Thank you, Wade. Uh, yeah, I, I do recall, uh, well, I think w watching a documentary where they talked about how the size of the head is smaller than the size of the Sphinx itself, which leads people to believe that the original head was indeed a lion head to match the lion body. <clears throat> but that said, the, recarve, uh, the recarving happened. You, you know, seem distracted. During the times of ancient Egypt as well, <clears throat> so the damage to the Sphinx was still after it was carved. Well, um, don't most places have their own security force? Sure, but we rangers work across the whole of Freestar Collective Space. I think that's admirable. Like most things that are worth doing, it ain't always easy. But do I think we make the Freestar Collective a little safer for everyone? Yeah, I do. I imagine you've got some questions. I'll answer anything I can. Is it paying work? I'll say right up front that if you're looking to get rich, this ain't the line of work for you. But yeah, we do get paid from time to time to help with expenses and such. What authority do the Freestar Rangers have? Well, in theory, a Freestar Ranger can go anywhere in Freestar Collective Space, uh, even private property. But of course, it doesn't always work out that way. We also have jurisdiction over any local security when we're tracking a fugitive. Are there a lot of Rangers? The number's always changing due to retirements, recruiting, and unfortunately, death in the line of duty. But as far as I know, there's never been more than a dozen rangers at any one time. Really? I know what I need to. Let's continue. Okay, then. A word about myself. I'm in charge of making sure anyone that wants to be a Freestar Ranger is up to the task. That being said, the <clears throat> Marshal wouldn't send you here if he didn't think you had potential. So, what's it gonna be? Are you ready to sign up with the Freestar Rangers? <laughs> Given the way I had to bail him out, how about you give me the marshal's job? If you knew half of what I did about the man, you'd show him a lot more respect. Besides, I'm next in line, and I'll be damned if I'm letting you cut ahead of me. How do I apply? Do I fill out a form or something? I prefer a more practical kind of evaluation. I'll give you the details if you want to join up. 
I want to join the Freestar Rangers. I hope you understand the responsibility you are taking on. Before I hand you a badge, I need to know you can handle the job. You helped out with the hostage situation, but sometimes people just get lucky. Tell you what, use the mission terminal and take one of the listed jobs. Your choice. Come back alive, and we'll talk about you joining up. Interesting. <laughs> Didn't I already prove myself at Galbank? This is a dangerous line of work, and I'm not putting someone in the field unless I'm sure they're ready. Couldn't we just skip the evaluation? <laughs> Sorry, but it doesn't work that way. Just do the one mission, and we'll go from there. All right, prepare to be impressed. Oh, got no lack of confidence, have you? Well, let's see if you back it up. Okay, complete a Freestar Ranger mission. Good to see you. Kill the outlaw captain on Andromus 1. Kill the outlaw gang leader on Aranai 4D. Destroy the Crimson Fleet captain at Karnai. Rescue a hostage at Indium 1A. <clears throat> They all look interesting, and they all take me to completely different systems. But this one pays more. These two pay the same. Deserted mineral plant, abandoned cryo lab. Abandoned cryo lab? Hey, that sounds interesting. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, uh, I mean, I really wanted to what finish- What can I get you, Emma? Oh, nothing for now. Came to talk, actually. Well, to apologize, more like. Late one night, Annie Wilcox oh, tried to arrest me for fool. public indecency. Well, <laughs> She'll I be a Annie's terror when she grows up. Into her spy schemes. <laughs> I Don't be causing trouble now. I can't listen if you're Work all talking hard, to me. Hard, God. That should be the Freestar motto. I just want to overhear conversations and every single person in the bar is trying to talk to me. Okay, let's see. Um, let's try switching out my companions. Uh, how do I get... Where is Sam Coe? I don't even remember. He's back at... Is he back at um, the lodge? Yeah. So I'd have to go to the lodge to get him. Ms. Cordelia Chesterfield says, don't worry, Ox, you still have more character missions with Sam. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Right. So this takes us to a brand new system. I have not been to Andromas. Let's jump. Any adventure you can fly away from. Is, is that how the saying goes? Okay, I accepted a hail. Take them down! A free star sec ranger. Concentrate fire! Under attack by ecliptic mercenaries. <laughs>
Well, I don't think we got there in time to, to help the, to save the Freestar, but the Freestar guy was already nearly dead. Bad that we couldn't steal the free, uh, that we couldn't um, save the free star guy. Ms. Cordelia Chesterfield says if your ship is landed, you can change crew members. Okay, I mean if I'm already gonna get through a lot of um, Samco, well I'd hate to miss out on that too. All right, let's take a look at the map. Let's scan it. All right, abandoned cryo lab. We've also got spaceship debris and an abandoned Moy Bridge Pharmaceuticals lab. I'd love to spend time and just discover all of these things, but I want to get through the quests. Setting down, everything in the green. For your survey mission, look for landmark, life science, and hazard map icons using your scanner. These locations can be spread far and wide, so explore and use the scanner frequently to find them. Boost the scanner's range by starting an outpost and building a scan booster. Why are they giving me this tooltip now? Joanne D says you got there in plenty of time, you just did nothing for a bit. Oh, the judgment! The ju Listen, when I got there, the only ship I could see was the Freestar Ranger ship. I could target it, but I didn't want to target and attack it, and I started boosting forward to try and find the Ecliptic Mercenaries. I didn't even know who was attacking him at first, but by the time I found the Mercenaries, the Freestar Ranger was dead. All this judgment, gosh. No organics here. Uh, valuable minerals, perhaps. Okay. Ooh, the chat is brutal. Normal user says, the mercenary was in front of your face. What do you mean you couldn't find them? They were, <laughs> they were on the other side of the asteroids. They were behind the free star. Joanne D says, just hit E to switch to the next target. Oh, is that what I got to do? Also, I was receiving a hail, and I pressed the button to try and listen to it, but it never popped up. Synth veal. Synth meat veal. Okay, Ooh, what's this?
Udon mini bite? It's an Udon mini bite. Oh, it's food. Hey, Grunt issue seven. <clears throat> Ballistic weapons permanently do 5% more critical damage. Nice. Veterans Refined Shock Trooper Space Helmet. Okay, so that's where we need to go for the quest, and yet uh, I didn't get a chance to explore out here yet. There's a hab over there, and I wonder what that hab is all about. Let's check it out. Oh, this is going to be our exit. Ooh, hello. <laughs> Broken switch, touch, and I regret my decision. Okay. Well, that's the uh, the outside. Let's go deeper in. Ooh, furious calibrated. Always grid. worth checking. Never know what you might find in their pockets. Cigar is out. Psychic Afro Dancer says, Ox showed off those grandpa re reactions. God dang it. Grandpa reactions. I'll show you grandpa reactions. Watch, yeah. Cloud Big says hold space while in your what? ship to be more maneuverable. Oh, best you can do? Pull <laughs> back now! <laughs> you cannot beat me! Ray for air vents, but they know we're here.
scientists. Okay, we could jump down through the vent, but... So can't get through the ice. Bummer. Regarding structural report, uh, uh, report, urgent, by Charlie Jorgensen. Lars, I've brought this up before, but Shannon doesn't seem to grasp the situation. If we don't do something about the system connectors for the cryogenic projects, and there is even a minor failure, we could have facility-wide issues. I know you understand this problem, but I want to remind you that the exterior environmental changes are potentially exacerbating the situation. We can't control those factors. Please talk to Shannon. As much as I enjoy working with you, I don't want to be trapped in this ice tomb forever. Thanks, Charlie. Well, someone didn't listen. Nothing there. Shame. Oh, I smell credit. Am I encumbered already? Oh my god. What is it? Did you need me to carry something for you? Uh-huh. Oh, crap. Okay. So, yes. Goodbye. She is so awkward. How's that for grandpa reactions? Best not to leave anything useful behind. Ship repair fundamentals, Tales of Space and Time, The Gravity Paradigm. I think I've read them all. Did I read Tales of Space and Time? The Crystal Egg. I did. I was wondering if is the kidney dish meant for You're kidneys nothing. or is it named that just because it's shaped like a kidney? I'm gonna guess it's shaped like a kidney, it's not meant to hold kidneys. Sort of Damocles, we read that. Ooh, we've got a terminal somewhere.
Communication mail systems, Shannon Palmero, uh, Marzana Project Coordination Liaison, Charlie's Concerns, Dr. Lars Gayarty. Hey Shannon, Charlie wanted me to bring up the issues with the lab again. For what it's worth, I think we should at least do an evaluation. Our initial system setups don't account for the environment outside the lab. You know RI won't let us do anything to fix it officially if we don't have something solid. We're all on the same ship here. Now that's our. Now that that's out of the way, time to grab a drink. I'll come down by your office after shift two, Lars. Official response, Ryujin Liaison. Um, Project Marzana, Liaison, Shannon Palmero. Your request for additional resources to address the issues outlined in your previous communication has been reviewed. The decision has been made to deny these resources at this time. Evaluated risks are well within acceptable parameters. Proceed with the project as scheduled. Serious problem, Charlie Jorgensen. Shannon, this is important. The issue with the cryo connect uh, connectors for the lab and the ambient environment fluctuations we talked about. It's more serious than I originally thought. I think we'll need to halt the current experiments, pause the whole program, and upgrade the labs. We're all in danger here, including you. Please do the right thing and at least have someone look into it. Dr. Charlie Jorgensen. Marzana Project Technician. Wonder what the Marzana Project is. Encryption task completed. Marie Bakaba. My team has completed implementation of the Seshat encryption. All project data going forward will be encrypted automatically as it is uploaded onto the local servers. I have also personally overseen the encryption of our older Marzana Project data. I agree the value of this data cannot be overstated, and I support any further efforts to lock down possible leak vectors through the scientists and staff here. During our efforts, we have found multiple cases of indiscretion among the staff that pose a security risk. As a first additional step, I recommend we prevent any project data from being loaded onto personal slates. Please let me know how to proceed. Thanks, Marie. Whisper Fire says, I recognize that place. I must have run through that place at least 12 or so times in New Game Plus. You're in the cryo lab, right? Obviously, I missed the lore. Thank you, Whisper Fire. And, uh, you know, I have seen some dungeons, at the layouts at least, repeated over and over again. I wonder, however, if the lore can be unique from randomly generated location to location. Okay, no. Nah. Wow, lock a bug. <laughs> Easy, Mark. Well, come together, then. Another lab over there. Let's explore this one first. Secure access at the bottom. So we'll open that up later. Our mark, we saw him through the door. 
Did they have anything of value? Okay, so two doors leading to secure access on the bottom. Uh, I got better shit to do than looking for you. Let's finish exploring this top area first. And then we'll go down. Okay, so we need to go this way. Hey. What? No. This just leads to a room overlooking the lab. Okay, so False then that's alarm, just a everyone. window. Huh? We can't get in there from there. Unless there was a door over here. What was that? No, it's locked. Okay. Yeah, it was nothing, guys. Time to get back to it, I guess. I love how they can look at me, make eye contact through a window, and if I take long enough to get to them, they're like, ah, it was nothing. Marzana Project Data. Protected by Seshat... Uh, encryption, authorized access only, property of Marzana Project, all contacts, all content exclusively owned and controlled by Ryujin Industries. That's one storyline in the game that I have yet to explore, this Ryujin company. Right, well then we've got two options to go down Damn or it. go up. The up path leads down, so let's try that for now. Hello, Captain Dunn. Talk to Emma Wilcox. Now right, we could probably jump up through there, but I wonder if this path leads there. No, it goes down. It goes further down. Oh, wow. All right, so let's loot that room while we can. Okay, this is the room we saw on the other side of that glass. Hey. Eh, just some stupid noise. 
Right, <clears throat> so we've got the vent over there, but then we've got this passage down here. <laughs> Good one! Sorry! <laughs> what were you doing standing there? <laughs> Andrea, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> if there's anything you need, I am happy to share. Right, let's uh, give her more of my stuff because I am again encumbered. I need to deposit all the resources, but even then, that's not a lot of... What is weighing me down? Is it throwables? I'm not holding a lot of them. All right, then. One second, everybody. All right, uh, thanks for your patience, everybody. of victory. Hopefully they amount to something. Okay, so huge room here. And this lets us drop down into it so we could explore up above or drop down to explore from the bottom. Let's explore from the top first. place. Okay, so all paths lead down, it looks like. Or into the next room? Or is this a dead what? end and we need to go up? Yeah, it looks like this is a dead end. Uh, dead end. We'll have to go up. There it is. There's the, um, 
There's the hole we jumped, we could have jumped oh. down from. Need a moment to walk that off? Ooh, I sprained my foot. Okay, we need to go up then. It's really interesting how how um the ice completely changes the navigation of oh hello. Oh. You should be the one dying. <laughs> Okay. Might want to heal that, says chat. All right. How do I heal a sprained ankle? Anchored immobilizers. Sprain cured. Okay. Before we go up... Actually, no. This is a... Cryogen utility key, and a final report. It looks like my luck has run out. I tried everything to prevent this disaster, and now I might be its final victim. Blame doesn't matter. Everyone involved in this poor decision-making is dead, or likely will be soon. If corporate entities are reading this, then please note that I reported everything correctly and followed all the procedures, so there should be no reason to reduce any posthumous benefits. <laughs> God, he's worried about posthumous benefits. Oh, this poor guy. Uh, when I find you. Hey, and the key leads to a loot lab. Explosive refined Go ahead, kraken. Please, coward. Nice. Ah. Berserker poison explosive. It's a refined crank. And Art Pixel says an empty elevator shaft. Be sh sure to go up all the way. Thank you, Art Pixel. I think I found what was at the top. Did you need something? Need to see what I'm carrying? Back to it then. This is elaborate. Winner takes all this difference, is it not? I'm getting all turned around in here now. So, the place froze over. Because what the one guy predicted would happen did. Corporate wouldn't listen. A familiar story.
Nothing in this room, I guess. Okay, in a locked room, let's see. So that would work on the top, which means we need something like this to finish it. I feel like the story's not complete, though. I'm hoping to find more holotapes or something to explain the final bit of the story. What? Yes, you need me. What have you yep. got for me? More, uh, let's see. Let's give her... Gosh, I'm not even carrying that many resources. Andrea can't carry any more. Until next time. was quite a leap. How do they even try? <laughs> Explosives. Hey, navigator balance back. And I'm encumbered again. Dear God. A dead end? Looks like it. Okay. Well, we passed a bunch of stuff, so we'll likely find the way out back where we came from. Because all of this was at the end of a side passage, not the primary route. We explored everything in there, we explored everything in there. And we came from here, didn't we? Yeah, and then we turned right instead of going this way. Walk up the ice wall, says King Rat. Oh. Take what you must. Leave the rest for the scavengers. Okay. Well, I think we've done our due diligence here. Yeah, that was the... We unlocked that with the code that we got at the top of this shaft. We jumped up there.
Yeah, and this leads us back in here. Right. Deuteronomist says you may have picked up some food. That could be a kilo or two. Yeah, good call. I wish there was a different um, chunks cake, orange juice, the rest are all crafting components, junk flush. I wish there was a different ah ramen category for food. All of those are crafting components. I explore down here. I did. Yeah. I think. All right, let's head to the ship. We did what we needed to do. And I believe we looted the place. So that was the ice uh, ramp that you were talking about. Got to wait for my stamina. Or my oxygen, I should say. Jeremy says, this uh, section is surprisingly large. It is. Rising of the large for a bounty mission. I think you may be trying to take a little too much on. Yeah, I think so. Literally. Okay, and this is going to put us out the other side of that door that we couldn't open because it had a, a broken latch, I'm guessing. Yeah. Hey. And there we go. To the ship! Deuteronomist says, now may be a good time to transfer crafting components from the aid section of your ship's hold. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, 
Yeah, once I get to the ship, this will all be easier. I'm gonna dump all of my miscellaneous stuff and all of the aid that I don't need. I should have done that before I um, disembarked. Shutter says you should be able to move faster using the jetpack. But well, it still consumes my oxygen. I find the interior of this ship comforting. Well, I'm glad you like it, Andrea. Okay. Cargo hold. Let's go to inventory, aid. I'm holding a lot of this stuff. Each one is a pound. That's a lot of bandages. I'm gonna store half of them. Why do I have Chardonnay? I should have drunk that. Each of those is plus, is point 10. Let's store those. I'm collecting a lot of these, but I need them for dialogue checks still. I'll store as many as I can. Thankfully, the med packs have zero weight. Oh, and I was carrying food. I'll eat that. Synapse Alpha, I've got 11 of these. Forty-three trauma packs! Oh my god. Each of these is point ten. <laughs> well, it's about time I uh did this. Jeez. Udon mini bite, soba mini bite. There we go. Brad Ludwig says, Ox, have you thought about putting a point into weightlifting or fitness? I have. I believe I have some points to spend, don't I? I've got three skill points. Weapon engineering, challenge progress. Oh, I need to craft 30 weapon mods before I can get the next level of weapon engineering. I need to go back and do that, but it's just gonna be such a... I don't know. Weightlifting. Yeah, let's do this. Ten percent more oxygen available. There we go. I maxed out piloting. Boost pack. I wanted to do this. we go.
Great. Skill maxed out. Uh, hold on. Where's Andrea? She's carrying a bunch of stuff. Always a pleasure. What did you need? I have never been one to shy away from shouldering my share of a heavy load. I'll just let her hold all of these for now. I'll figure that out later. Very good. Hey, Hi there, how Captain. Are you? But I can't sell here, so. I'll wait until I land somewhere where I can actually sell. Container is at max capacity, of course it is. Right. Okay. Let's go back to Aquila City. Actually, we could use this opportunity to go check out Egypt. Hong Kong, New York, London, Cairo. Ooh, that was fast. Already? They're not supposed to land so quickly. Well, there's the pyramids. And they've been beaten down a bit. Where is it? <coughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Each step. <laughs> Each step, huh? I, I hear a ship landing. There it is! Why is it always them? <laughs> wow. Perhaps not the wisest decision. We are at the top of the pyramids, everybody. There's another one over there. Where's the snow globe? Uh. It's gonna be over there on that pyramid. I scaled the wrong pyramid.
And I came at the wrong time. It was just at, at sunset. So everything is dark. Well, the pyramids have really been beaten down. There we go. Cairo Snow Globe. <laughs> Climbing the pyramids. I mean, I'll never be able to do this in real life. <clears throat> Cairo Security. They don't let tourists climb the pyramid. It's against the rules, so I'm gonna climb it now. There we go. Where's the other ship? There it is. They're just hanging out over there. They're not coming to me. Wow, this is huge. I guess this is the Great Giza Pyramid? And that was the smaller one? Ooh-wee. Any sarcophagi? Wow, this is so cool, though. Right, well, we gotta go clear out those guys. There should be another one? Yeah, you're right, there's three. Um, Andrea, could you just chill out? She keeps standing on me. There's one. We're on one. There's the other ship. There's my ship. I thought there were three. Must be over there. Right, well, let's go kill some Starborn. a limb <laughs> I'm gonna have to get more immobilizers I keep fractioning and spraining my limbs over the hill somewhere around here. Erica says Bethesda should pay you to voice a companion. Unlimited carry capacity, good at lock picking and hacking, and never gets in the way of shooting. I would only agree to it if I never get in the way. My character will always says something like, oh, you got this. I'll hang back here and drink scotch. You do you. I'll carry anything you want, but don't worry, I won't get in your way. There we go. I'll let them use their stealth. 
until they pop out. There they are. I believe we are not alone. There's one more. There we go. Starborn dead. Okay, I'll show you guys what it looks like when you try to uh, take over a Starborn ship. You can't actually enter it. Okay, the door should be right here, and when you look through it, all you do is see space. Look at that. Starborn Guardian inaccessible. So you can't take over a Starborn ship. It looks really cool though. I wish we could. Okay, so there are two pyramids. Um, I don't see... Is that it? Maybe that's it? I'm sad we can't find the Sphinx. Is the Sphinx not here? Maybe I should come back at another time during the day and uh, explore a little more. But it's night. I have a quest. Let's go back to the ship. It is good to be back in our own ship. Wade Speakerman says, <clears throat> The Great Pyramid of Giza, 481 feet, was the tallest structure on Earth until 1311, when the Lincoln Cathedral, 525 feet, was built in England. Thank you for that one, Wade. And then Diamond Lions FC says, The Constellation Story has a clear break before its end game, which encourages exploration. It's a good spot to stop maintaining, or, uh, to stop mainlining and do side quests. Is that so? Okay, well then maybe I'll uh, consider that. Let's go to inventory. Let's go to miscellaneous and store all. How do we store all miscellaneous? 
No, we need to go to resources and store all. And then my notes. I think I put my notes up my safe back at... Um, some of these are carry weight. Some of these are heavy, though, so... I'm carrying a lot of books. It's been a while. Since I got rid of some of these books. Okay. Right. <clears throat> Uh, let's go. I got Mateo wiping away tears. Poor Mateo. Well, hey there. You've got potential. Just need to see a little more from you. What? Oh, you're back. How'd it go? Oh, there we go. I passed your little test. Now give me my damn badge. Nothing I love more than blowing away some bad guys. I hope I helped to make, make the Freestar Collective a bit safer. The mission was a success. I'm ready to take the next step. Let's try I hope I made the Freestar a bit safer. I'm sure you did. And I'm glad to know that was your priority. You did what I asked, so let's go meet the marshal. Follow me. <clears throat> All right, follow Emma Wilcox. We're headquartered in the upper floors of the rock, but we also have remote stations throughout Freestar Collective Space. Helps us to identify and respond to threats more quickly. Like I said before, there are less than a dozen rangers in all, and we operate with limited resources. Thankfully, most people respect us and are willing to cooperate. In this job, not everyone your gets eyes, to say they ears, work the and box. wits are every bit as important as your badge and your sidearm. Hey, Gunslinger's Guide 1. Permanently reload and draw Laredo weapons an additional 5% faster. All right. Marshal. Emma. I take it you're here because you're satisfied that our new recruit can handle the job. Seems like a fine candidate. Got the right priorities. All right, then. Step forward, recruit. Let me have a word with you. No, not you. It's me. He wants to talk to me, Andrea. You're trying to get out of the way and you're not. You're getting Excuse in me. the way. <laughs> this is not you getting out of the way. You've got guts, no doubt about that. All right, Marshal. I've got just one question. Do you pledge to defend the people of the Free Star Collective, even if it means risking your own life? 
<laughs> we could say, uh, I guess so? Risk my life? Just how dangerous is this job? Or I pledge to punish the enemies of the Freestar Collective. Or... Absolutely, Marshall. Let's try... Risk my life? How dangerous is this job? You've already had a glimpse of what we deal with. I'm not going to lie to you. It can get a lot more dangerous than what you've seen. So what's your answer? You up for this? Absolutely, Marshal. Good. Here, take these. You're now a Freestar Ranger deputy. I'm assigning you to Ranger Wilcox for some field training. Listen good to what she tells you. Welcome aboard, deputy. Good luck, deputy. Okay. Wish we could throw you a welcome party, but there's work to do. We got word from a farmer on Monterra Luna. She says someone's trying to take her farm, and she's afraid she might be in danger. What can you tell me about Monterra Luna? Well, it's a moon that orbits Monterra. It's got a breathable atmosphere, warm climate, and good soil for growing. Do we know anything about this farmer? Just a name. Michaela Wagner. There have been Wagoners on Monterra Luna for a long time, and I'm sure they're proud of that heritage. Time for some rough justice. Whoa! How about you ease back on the throttle there, Deputy? <laughs> Violence is the last resort. You don't draw your weapon unless innocent lives are in danger. Grab any supplies you might need, and let's get going. Andrea disliked that. I've got the wrong Pay attention companion. to what Ranger Wilcox tells you. I've got the wrong companion for this. All right, uh, let's see. We got the dead eye. Ooh, whoa, that is beautiful. Look at that. A hundred physical damage, laser sight, a compensator, penetrator rounds, and a hair trigger. Nice, deputy hat. That's the deputy hat, okay. Freestar deputy badge. I cannot equip this item. All right, there's my deputy badge. Gunslinger guide and then the ranger deputy uniform. Looks good, plus uh, 15 thermal, 10 airborne, but I lose out on physical and energy. Okay. Recruitment and retirement. Marshal, it is the opinion of the council that you need to prioritize recruiting. I'll say it plain. We need more rangers. You report Your report on the rise in smuggling makes that plain. Now, I don't mean to disparage the work that you and your rangers have done. I know you're all doing your best, but I can remember a time where there were twice as many of you as there are today. I'd like to see those days return, and so would the people of the Freestar Collective. I'd also like you to think about your successor. Let's be honest, Marshal. Neither of us is getting any younger. Surely you've earned the right to hang up your spurs. Wow, they're just leaning into this whole cowboy thing, aren't they? Hang up your spurs with pride and enjoy a well-earned retirement. I look forward to seeing you at the next council gathering. Hang up those spurs, Marshal. Blake's computer. Good luck out there. Wow. Accessing a Freestar Terminal gets you a guitar riff. Nice. <laughs> Recent messages. New Syndicate in play. To all Rangers, subject New Syndicate in play from Daniel Blake. I want you all to keep your eyes and ears open. I've been going over reports from local security both here and in Neon, and there's a disturbing trend. Hold on a second. Important phone call.
<clears throat> okay, sorry about that. No important updates yet. Seems like smuggling is, a, is on the rise in a big way, and there's more than one faction involved. Seems like we might have a new player looking to move in. We can probably expect to see some interfaction conflict that could spill over and put innocent lives at risk. If you learn anything that could be useful, let me know right away. Autumn's already looking into it, but leads are scarce so far. Another false alarm. To all rangers from Emma Wilcox, just so you all know, that report we got about the farm on Polvo turned out to be another false alarm. Local security says they headed out to take a look, and the man they talked to said nothing was wrong. Funny thing is, the original call came in from a woman, and when security asked to talk to her, the man who they'd met said she went off-world to visit family. Normally, I wouldn't think twice about it, but I'd read a similar report only a month earlier where the call had come in from an elderly man, only local security didn't see anyone that old, and when they asked where they were, told he, they were told he was gone on vacation. Could be nothing, I know, but if anyone hears about trouble on a farm, let me know. Couldn't hurt to check it out. Well, we just got a quest about trouble on a farm. Interesting. Good news to all rangers from Emma Wilcox. For those who haven't heard, we got some good news. The doc has approved Helga for limited duty on site here at The Rock. With some luck, she'll be back in the field in a few weeks, but we want to take things slow and take all the necessary precautions. In the meantime, let's all give her some encouragement and support. No ranger wants to be stuck indoors while there are people out there who need our help, but sometimes that's the way it's going to be. I know you all be he there for her while she heals up. Helga's status. From, uh, to Daniel Blake from Mary Cartwright. Marshall, I'm happy to inform you that Helga is making good progress and her recovery is ahead of schedule. The worst is behind her, and I expect no lingering after effects from the injury. However, I'm not yet ready to clear her for field duty. We're still in a window uh, where there's a risk of aggravation, and I want her to stay in Aquila City for observation, including a continuation of her daily checkups. She seems to take the news well, but it's clear she's eager to get out back out there. A little support and encouragement from you and the other rangers could help ease the burden. Shaw Gang Activity To Daniel Blake from Davis Wilson, Marshall. Just wanted to let you know that some of the Shaw boys are in town. They ain't caused any trouble yet, but we both know it's only a matter of time. One of them we ID'd as Jed Bullock, a new recruit with a pension for drinking and doing acting up. I think that's the guy that we met at the bank robbery. The others who were with him, we didn't recognize, but we figured them for green based on how they followed Jed around. Seems he's the leader of the crew. That's all I've got for now. I figured with your experience going up against the Shaw, the Shaw gang, you ought to know that they're around. McChazder says, uh, I'm going to be completely honest, the whole new frontier looking like the old west? Tired of it. Thanks for the continued content, my good man. It's a bit kitschy, I suppose. Um, but, I mean, having a an old west <laughs> spaceport is kind of fun. Daniel Roberts became a gold ox. Thank you, Daniel Roberts. Shaw gang activity. Uh, we read that one. Recruiting reminder. To all rangers from Daniel Blake, I know you've all heard me say it before, but the council would really like to see us bolster our ranks. So here's my obligatory reminder to keep a lookout for anyone you think might be ranger material. There's fewer of us now than there have been since I joined up. And I don't have to tell you all, that was a long damn time ago. Fact is, the Freestar Collective ain't exactly getting safer by the day. There's always been more trouble than there's been rangers to handle it, but that's more true now that it, than it's ever been. We need more help, and we need it soon. Cat5 became a bronze ox. Thank you so much, Cat5. We've got personal journal, recruitment, May 6th, 2330. Sent around the usual message to the others about recruiting. I hate to nag, but I don't know what else to do. We're way be below where I'd like us to be, and if there really is another smuggling syndicate setting up shop in the Freestar Collective, we are going to be spread dangerously thin. At this point, I'm ready to accept any halfway decent candidate who walks into the rock. Oh, that makes me feel great. Emma's got an eye for talent, and I trust her to weed out anyone that's unfit. If it gets to the, count the council off my back, I ain't gonna complain. Autumn. May 3rd, 2330. I'm starting to worry about Autumn. As much as I'd like to deny it, Emma might be right. Maybe tracking down that new smuggling syndicate we've been getting reports about was too big of an assignment. She's young, headstrong, and ain't the best at keeping in touch while she's out in the field, so the long silence might mean she's in some kind of trouble. Oh dear. 
I have a feeling we're going to be rescuing this autumn in the near future. For now, I'm going to sit tight and hope we get some kind of word soon. Emma always says we've got to have faith in the people we give a badge to, so for now, I'll stay the course. But if another week goes by without news, I might need to send someone out to track her down. I ain't much for superstition or luck, but I'll cross my fingers anyway. Retirement. May 1st, 2330. Seems like every time I get a slate from one of the governors, they're, they've are they just got to bring up retirement. We ain't trying to push you into it, they all say. We're just looking to the future. Gotta be prepared, after all. Feels like I've read some version of that a half dozen times in the past month alone. I've got no delusions. I'm sorry, I've got no illusions that I'm the best marshal the Rangers ever had. But damn, am I doing such a bad job that they want me gone? Or is it something else? No way I'd believe Emma would go around behind my back and talk to the council. She jokes about it, sure, but I trust her like family. What would I even do, anyway? Am I supposed to set up some farm on my own and while away my last days watching the crops grow until the sun goes down? To hell with that! Truth is, I live for the job and nothing else. When I can't do that anymore, I'll hang up my spurs! Stop talking about hanging up your, your spurs! Spurs are <laughs> used on horses, and there are no horses in this universe anymore. They're extinct. Oh, this doggone spur talk. The governors can wait. <laughs> Gonna hang up my spurs. Making me retire. I need my spurs. Doggone spurs, the only thing I got left from my wife. She gave me those spurs for my anniversary. I love those spurs. I'm not gonna hang them up to my spurs. <laughs> I got spurs. Ah, jingle, jingle, jingle. Right. We need to go to Montara. K. McD says, dude, the phrase hang up your spurs is still in use today. I mean, yeah, but it's not being used by the United Colonies or anyone on Neon or literally anyone else in the universe, but we're getting it all over the place here in Aquila City. I suppose if there ever was a place for you to hang up your spurs, it would be Aquila City, but it seems to be all anyone's doing is hanging up their spurs. Okay, this is Montara Luna, and there is the Wagoner Farm. off immediately or are this there other matters space. that require your Please attention? Please hold your current speed and heading while we scan you for contraband. All right, we're done. Go ahead and land. to go for landing. Wagoner Farm, location discovered. Well, if anything we learned on that terminal is true about this place, then we might meet somebody who is probably not the person we are here to meet. Over here! The Free Star Rangers. You have no idea how happy I am to see you. I'm Ranger Emma Wilcox. My deputy and I are here to help. Now, tell us what happened. I was out planting in the fields when I saw some men approaching. They looked like soldiers with uniforms and weapons and such. They wanted to buy the farm. Didn't even ask if it was for sale. Their offer was so low, I told them right where they could stick it. They said they'd give me time to think about it, but if I didn't change my mind, I was gonna regret it. Then they left. 
How many men were there? There were four, but when they were walking away, I heard them talking like there were others. Maybe there's more out there. Any reason why someone might want this farm in particular? Nothing I can think of, no. Truth is, we're in some hard times here. The last harvest was the worst we've had in a long time. Besides, it ain't like there's a lack of available land around here. You said they looked like soldiers? That's right. The uniforms looked like the ones worn by Free Star soldiers back during the war. They had a certain steel in their eyes. Like men who are used to violence. I was in fear for my life. We can pass a soldier check to say, this is no military operation. Soldiers don't get sent to buy farms. Well, they sure as hell look like fighting men to me. Go see for yourself. They headed into the canyons back behind the house. That place is dangerous. Steep slopes, narrow trails, rock slides, and all manner of hostile creatures, too. If you're going after those men, be careful. Oh, there's one other thing. They said they were the first. The first of what, I'm not sure. But there must be more of them coming. Thank you, ma'am. That should be enough for us to find these men. All right, deputy. Keep that weapon handy and your eyes sharp. Since these guys don't know we're after them, they're probably not making an effort to hide their tracks. Now, let's go and check out those canyons. We are in your hands now, deputy. Sounds like a rootin' tootin' good time. I want to try out my new gun. Oh, I've got it. Deadeye. Oh, it's one of these? Oh, it's just a, uh, a unique one. Quiet out here. I like it. Nice change of pace from Aquila City. Wait, why? Why is my quest marker all the way over here? Did I not walk directly over it? Oh, boot tracks. Several pairs of boots, uh, boot tracks, lead into the canyon. Boot tracks. Several pairs by the look. Not too old, either. Let's head down into the canyon and see if we can find more. It is unfortunate there is no safer route. I grew up on a farm. We should take our time Back and step kid, carefully. I used to love exploring and making maps. These canyons would have kept me busy for months. I'd have looked into every nook and cranny. Swarming sunflower? Grab some cover! Was hoping for a quiet day. Where'd it go? Now. I need to get those grenades off of her inventory. This is ridiculous. <laughs> I hope wherever you store that, the smell will not be an issue. The boot tracks turn right along the canyon floor. Good eye, deputy. Looks like we're heading in the right direction. We're tracking a varmint. A group of varmints. Hey! I think I just got poisoned.
Whoa! It would seem that a fall is not the only thing that can kill you here. Settler. Toxic pool. Get ready! Yeah, this gun is way better than the revolver. Where did that guy come from? Oh, <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> I triggered all the mines and then I boosted out of there uh, for my companions to walk right on top of them. Sorry about that. <laughs> my bad. Blowing off some steam. Creature pile. Got a situation here. Look out. How's that for old man reflexes, huh? Okay, my boost pack is a bit too powerful. Too powerful. Flucking dew grazer. Tracks turn left. Hmm. They definitely passed this way. Let's just hope they're not perched up onto these canyon walls, waiting to snipe at us. These guys are just popping into existence. Well, it's not the creatures that are mining nice this trail. Get out under the sky for a spell. Being a mother means I don't get as much field work as I used to. I love this thing. Profit is never necessarily the aim, but if there is something worth taking. Lacerations game. Gosh, I'm just getting all sorts of negative effects. <clears throat> right, let's deal with my lacerations. Bandages, right?
Tracks veer slightly left. You're a natural tracker. This looks bad. Gotta go down into this canyon. My jetpack is too powerful. I guess that's a rock. Hmm. Oh. Right. Natural tracker. Tracks continue further into the ravine. You smell that? I'd bet my badge that's wood smoke from a campfire. Confront the ruffian. Be they cannot right. be far ahead. Let us hope they are not waiting just on the other side of this cave. There they are. Hello, ruffians. You're right in that damn neighborhood. The standoff at the bank ought to keep the marshal tied up for a while. Wait. You mean that whole thing was a setup to keep the rangers distracted? <laughs> that don't concern you. If the rangers get in our way, then they get what they deserve. That's all you need to know. Now quit complaining and get back to your post. We're right here. We heard everything. We're gonna have some fun. Well now, look who's here. Ms. Wagner called in the cavalry. <laughs> Except it ain't much of a cavalry. I suggest you turn around and walk away while you still can. It seems we have found our quarry. What do you want with Wagoner Farm? Oh, it ain't exactly the farm that's special. But that ain't none of your business. Who are you? Don't recognize the uniforms. Guess I shouldn't be surprised. It's like the Major said, everyone's conveniently forgotten. Forgotten our sacrifice. Forgotten how we were betrayed. We'll make them all remember soon enough. I promise you that. Are these like veterans of the colony war? We could pass a soldier check to say those are Free Star Militia uniforms. What unit are you with? That's none of your damn business. Well, we could say you're the ones that need to leave right now or I'm not get going anywhere, not until I get some answers. You think you're in a position to make demands. Well, I've got news for you. All you're getting from me is a shallow grave. So, got any last words I should try to remember? Ah, <laughs> uh, we could attack. We could say this doesn't need to get violent. Or we could say I'm placing you under arrest. Let's try that. If you think I give a damn about the Free Star Rangers, then you've got no idea who you're dealing with. Matter of fact, that just makes it even more fun. Air him out, boys! We've been found out! Your abilities are... Uh. Uh. It almost feels like cheating. Damn! Uh. That was a lot rougher than I expected. Let's talk. Well, I did try to talk peacefully, you know? I tried to arrest him like a good ranger would, without resorting to violence. Uh, are you okay? Is this a normal day's work for a ranger? Not usually. Most of the bad guys we run into are smart enough to stand down when they see the badge. What do you make of these guys? No way they're common thugs or hired muscle. The weapons, the training, the steel nerves. No, these guys were professionals. That badge with the number one, I feel like I've seen that before, but it was a long time ago. Tony J says, Ox shooting veterans. Thanks for your service, but it's not my fault you didn't get any pensions. 
Hey, hey, they attacked me first. What can you do? We could say, I thought we were dead for sure, or yeah, I'm good. Not my first firefight. Really? Guess you've led a pretty exciting life. Maybe the less I know about that, the better. Let's search the area. Maybe we can find something that explains what these guys were up to. What were they looking for exactly? Hopefully we can find something that explains who these guys were and why they were after the Wagoner farm. I'll see what I can find. Likewise. Okay. Gonna loot, 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 loot. Old earth hunting rifle. Remember that ammunition is not free. <laughs> Leave me alone, Andrea. Come on. Job's done. My contact on the inside came through, and I've got your ship. Grabbed it right out of the factory. How embarrassing for Hope Tech. I'll drop it off at the agreed upon location once the credits are in my account. If you need any other ships jacked, let me know. I'm always looking for work. And I got a, re a veteran's refined deep seeker spacesuit. It's actually got better physical damage. Resistance. <clears throat> but energy takes a big hit. EM takes a tiny hit. And the legendary effects on what I've got are just way better. Talk to Emma. Let's have a look around. Grunt, issue three. Ballistic weapons permanently do an additional 5% more critical damage. Nice. A cornered, boosted, calibrated double A ninety nine. It's gonna be great, but it uses a rare ammunition type, so Well, either we press on or we turn back. Your call. I will do this in my own sweet time. Ooh. You handled yourself well. Find anything interesting? We can show the slate and say, take a look at this. Let's see what we have here. Hmm, interesting. So, their ship was stolen from the Hope Tech factory. Whoever pulled that off must have been one hell of a shipjacker. Well, I guess someone really wants that farm bad. Speaking of which, let's get back there and let Miss Wagoner know that she's safe. For now. Yeah, but the ship, it's right there. Can we go explore the ship? What if we want the ship? What if there are more guys on the ship? Inaccessible. The watchdog. Man, okay. All right. Back to Emma Wilcox. Uh, I think I might as well take the straight path. Well, mostly straight path.
What does your scanner reveal? Life signs. Can we jump it? Oh, come on. Alley up. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> How did you get there? Yeah, she's upstairs. Wake up! I got news! Wakey, wakey! What happened? Did you find those men? We hunted them down and they died like dogs. They won't be troubling you again. They were in the canyon, like you said. Unfortunately, it came to violence. Well, it's good to see you're all right, then. They must have been crazy or desperate, trying to take on the Free Star Rangers. So who were they? And why do they want my farm? Do you know anything about stolen Hope Tech starships? Hope Tech? The cargo ship company? Sorry, I don't know anything about that. We have a lead, but it's still too early to say. They say the Rangers always get their man, so to speak. I'm sure you'll figure it out. I can't thank you enough. I'd hate to be remembered as the wagoner who couldn't hold on to the farm that's been in the family for so long. Gratitude is good, but credits are better. Or just doing our job. Of course. All the same... I'm grateful. If you have any more trouble, give us a call. We're in system, so it won't take long to get someone out here. All right, Deputy. Let's get back to the rock. We need to report this to the Marshal. Okay. And everything here is going to be set to owned. Maybe I can find a perk magazine lying around. Or a slate with lore. Hey, Solomon's Adventure 2. Permanently adds 5% to melee weapon critical damage. Solomon Co. Goes outside. Right. Well, there's a barn nearby. Let's explore that too. And another house. Mm -hmm. 
This must be where the workers live. Oh, can't use the terminal. Right. Nothing in here. Let's check out the barn real quick. Oh, it's a warehouse. That's a fat piggy. Yeah, that's it. Back to the ship. Well, there was a perfectly good landing pad right there, and we we landed outside of it. Say the word, and we shall be on our way. Oh, Hitomi says there's also a skill magazine in her farmhouse here up in the bedrooms. Okay. Thank you, Hitomi. It looks like I stumbled upon it on my own. Okay, talk to Daniel Blake. It seems like it's night no matter where we go. I always land at the wrong time. You do not want to go outside the city. Might be hard work, but it sure beats living under the boot. Uh, I, I, Just making my way. Did I miss the staircase? The mayor's all right. Always painting too rosy a picture, though. I did. It's to the right. There it is. I was hiding behind that wall. Oh, this place is hard to navigate. There we go. What's the story on Montero Luna? That call we got from Wagoner Farm turned out to be a little more interesting than I was expecting. Some men were trying to run the Wagoners off their land. They tried to buy it first, but when that didn't work, they turned to threats. We confronted them, and unfortunately, it came to violence. None of them survived. You helped someone in need and came back alive. That's a job well done. <laughs> Shall we celebrate with a drink? Yeah. You did good, but a celebration might be a little premature. <laughs> Mrs. Wagoner is safe. That's the important thing. For the time being, yes. But she could still be in danger. That's why we need to fill in some blanks. What did you make of these men who were trying to take the farm? Well, we could pass a soldier check to say these guys were definitely professionals. I had a feeling you were no stranger to combat. Good thing, too, given the turn of events. Interesting. Now, did you find anything that might give us a lead on why these men wanted the farm? 
We could give the slate just this. They hired someone to steal a ship from Hope Tech, or sorry, but this is the best we could do. Let's tell them what we know. Hope Tech ships ain't exactly cheap. That thief could probably tell us a lot about these men you ran into. There's something else. They were dressed in Free Star Militia uniforms. The unit badge was yellow on black with the number one. They also said something about being forgotten. They seemed bitter about it. Resentful. Didn't you fight in the Colony War, Marshal? Any of that sound familiar? The First Cavalry. I was in that unit for a while. But it was disbanded decades ago. After the Battle of Nera. What was left of it anyway? Mech unit! The First Cavalry, that was a mech unit, wasn't it? We could ask, what was the Colony War? Come on, we've gone through all of this. All right, let's do it for the lore. What was the Colony War? The war between the United Colonies and the Free Star Collective? Worst conflict the settled systems has ever seen. Each side unleashed terrible weapons on the other. And countless people died. The armistice uh, was signed 20 years ago. But a lot of folks still bear their scars. Could those men be veterans from the 1st Cavalry? I suppose it ain't impossible, but it's real damn unlikely. The unit was pretty much wiped out, and the few that survived ended up in prison after a court-martial for disobeying orders. I don't recall how long the sentence was. What happened at the Battle of Nera? The 1st Cavalry lost almost all their mechs and soldiers in a big push to take the United Colony's base. They were just about there when a ceasefire order came down. We heard about that. Both sides had just lost too much by then. It was a bloodbath. The commanding officer of the 1st disobeyed the order. He didn't want the lives of his soldiers to be sacrificed for nothing. They court-martialed him and the rest of the surviving officers and locked them all up. Yikes. <clears throat> well, two options. That still doesn't explain why they'd want the Wagoner farm, finding the starship thief that those men hired is our best lead. Let's try that. Hell, it's our only lead. The Hope Tech factory is in Hope Town on Polvo. Nia Kalu's our ranger stationed out there. She can introduce you to Ron Hope, the president of Hope Tech. He might be able to help you find the thief. Just make sure you stay on his good side. He's on the Council of Governors, and they're the ones we answer to. The Council of Governors? The ruling body that oversees the Free Star Collective and the Rangers. The council members are the political and corporate elite of the Free Star Collective. So we have to tread lightly when we're dealing with them. What can you tell me about Ron Hope? Proud, stubborn, and smart. A self-made man. He built Hope Tech through blood, sweat, and sheer willpower. I'll do what I have to, or that won't be a problem. Good. The last thing I need is the council breathing down my neck. This is your assignment now, deputy. Work with the other rangers. Find out what you can about those men on Montero Luna. Meantime, I'll look into a possible connection with the 1st Cavalry. Good hunting. Thank you, Marshal. Now, where do I hang up my spurs? All right, we're gonna do a hard save here. And that's gonna be it for me for today. I've got some phone calls to make. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm saying a lot of chatter in the chat about, um, curious how Sam Co would be responding to this quest line. So I think in my next broadcast, as we continue with the Free Star Collective Ranger quest, I'll switch out Andrea with Sam Co because she hasn't liked very much that I've done in this quest anyway. So I'm walking backwards with her affinity checks. Anyway, so we'll get Sam Co. see if he's going to be a better companion for this, and we'll continue with the Free Star Collective quests. But we got a lot done. We discovered two locations on Earth. We finished up the tour on Titan. It's been a blast. Thank you all for joining me. I'm going to be making phone calls and figuring out how uh, my puppy is doing. He's not a puppy anymore. He's four or five years old now, so... 
Uh, I'll let you guys know how he's doing tomorrow morning for another broadcast. Thanks, everybody, for coming. I wish you all a good evening, and I'll see you tomorrow morning with a brand new live stream. Bye-bye now. I always lose it.